Battle Line podcast uh, back here as always every Monday. Very special guest back on the show, Navy Seal. And uh, truthfully, Chris, I don't know what to say because it's always been Kristen Beck, and I think there may be uh, sort of an announcement. This may be the first time I'm I'm saying Chris Beck uh, in well, my nine years or so of knowing, uh, you know, knowing Navy Seal and retired Senior Chief Petty Officer Beck. Well, Chris, Chris is a is a is a male and female name too. So I, and she's and he, I, I, I still see it as Chris. I still see it as Chris Beck. I, I see the Navy Seal, and I think, uh, I think anybody can see however they want to see it. But um, you know, when you spell it with a K, you can go either way. I, I grew up everybody thinking that my name was Kristen because it was <laughs> K R I S. And so, um, I if, if Chris wants to go with Chris. I would have called her Chris or him Chris or whatever Kristen Chris wants to be called. Called, but I I still see Navy Seal Beck. And when, yeah, when, and you know, and and if she and if he wants to talk about her or she or Chris or whatever wants to talk about it that way, then we will. But I also respect what Chris wants to do because of yeah yeah that's it, it's 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 Chris's life. And but I still see I still see the Navy Seal when I when I see when I see Chris on any social media. That's what I always see. Yeah, and I think that's what they see now, too, and I'm sure we'll get into it. You know, um, as always, I say like, subscribe, wherever you're watching. Um, leave us any comments on YouTube, and uh, yeah, all of that stuff really helps the algorithm. Uh, follow us on Twitter, at BattleLinePod. Follow us <laughs> on Instagram, at BattleLinePodcast. Before I even get into our sponsors, I have to ask you, are you ever properly going to hang that amazing flag? No, no, I can't find. I don't know where you found the freaking heavy ass hook. I'll send you the link. I'll send you the yeah, link. Yeah, please do because I have been to Target, Walmart, Kohl's. I've shopped everywhere. Nothing holds over 10 pounds. And that thing is more than 10 pounds. So yeah, please do because I can't, brother, and I'm, I'm finally pulled my, I went to back to Joplin yesterday to see if I could find it. And I said, where the hell did Ian find it? Shit, I should have just asked you from the beginning. Send me the link like I normally did, but I thought it was something easy. I could just find it like a hard, I went to Home Depot too. Like, nope, we don't have anything that's over 10 pounds. Like, well, where the hell did he even find this thing? So, yeah, well, as soon as you send me the link, and I'll, because I'm getting tired of it sitting on my tough box here. Yeah, I have to move yeah every it's time well I done. It's, it's so yeah. well done. A Amazon has a product uh, from 3M that's, that's, you know, meant for this type of thing. So it's send really link, perfect dude. for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So before we get into anything, um, really excited. Ned has a new product. And for those of you, you know, we, we have listeners in law enforcement and the military, and they've said to us, hey, I can't do the CBD because I get drug tested as much as this, this stuff doesn't get you high it will show up on a drug test. So it's important, you know, to, to not take that stuff if it's your livelihood depending yeah, on it. Yeah. But for those of you, this is an awesome new product. So 70 million Americans have chronic sleep issues and 50% of Americans deal with sleep deprivation. You've probably dealt with this at some point in your life. I know how difficult it can be. It certainly happened to me uh, before Ned was introduced into my life. And one of our favorite brands, Ned, is here to help with their incredible new product, Shut Eye Chai. It's inspired by 5,000 years of ancient healing tradition, and it's Ned's biggest product launch to date. It's a mellow super blend latte for sleep that combines adaptogens, aminos, functional mushrooms, and magnesium. Seriously, the best ingredients out there wrapped in a heavenly masala chai inspired spiced body. Think cinnamon, clove, ginger, all that great stuff. It's all natural, made exclusively from functional botanicals, fungi, herbs, plants, minerals, roots, and spices. And just like their CBD, it's full transparency. They share third-party lab reports, who farms their products, and their extraction process all right there on their site. But with Shut Eye Chai, this does not contain CBD. Yeah. It also doesn't contain caffeine, melatonin, or dairy. And the thing is, yeah, Ned's products really help us perform better at our job. I mean, in terms of doing this, we have to be sharp. We have to be uh, listening and, and hearing what our audience is, is uh, you know, looking to hear us talk about and also our guests and, and being receptive to what we want to talk about with them. So hopefully I think using Ned has made both of us sharper. And yeah, my ritual has become just taking that Ned product at night, getting like my morning run in today. And now I'm alert. So yeah, discover how Shut Eye Chai can revolutionize your sleep and get 15% off with the code BATTLELINE. That's helloned.com slash BATTLELINE, or just enter the code BATTLELINE at checkout 
Once again, that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com slash battle line. You're going to get 15% off Sweet Dreams. And this show is sponsored by something very different than a product that's going to help you sleep because it would wake you up out of sleep. <laughs> and that's Pamax Tactical, their Lion device. Pamax Tactical is a law enforcement owned and operated company. It manufactures a wide variety of products for the AR platform and an industry leader in the field of alternative breaching tools like their Lion device. The Lion is a safer, reloadable, non-regulated alternative to the use of flashbangs, a impact actuated handheld device that boasts 180 decibel output. It is available in civilian and law enforcement configurations. And for you as a firearms instructor, this is something you could rely on to throw something new into the mix, yeah. right? Yeah, and it, is, and it is safer than flashbangs. And for those of you that are in the training world or the, or the 2A community or have gone through any sort of scenario-based training, you know what a flashbang is, which can be very dangerous if not used correctly. And, and the Paymax line device actually is, is much safer, but it's more effective too as a training device. And it's going to be more cost-effective if you continually use it down the line. And as most of you, every, most of you trainers out there are gonna use it continually because you have classes throughout the year. So uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend to check it out. Get away from your flashbangs, the old flashbangs, go to the Lion device and you will not only see your training work out better, but you're also gonna see your cost be lower as well. So uh, yeah, if you're in law enforcement military, get away from those flashbangs, get in the Lion device and you're gonna save money and you're gonna have better training. Absolutely. So if you're looking for something special as the holiday season approaches, definitely check out some of Pamex Tactical's other proprietary products, including the custom firearms accessories like the Hades hybrid muzzle device available in various hunting calibers, including the 350 Legend, or you can spice up your build with over two dozen variations of beautifully color accented X Slick AR 15 bolt carrier groups, ideal for those building custom firearms, trying to capture the Instagram views, or simply making a special gift for a special someone. So, as usual, Pamax tactical products are proudly made in the USA and they're backed by a lifetime warranty. Yeah. So, check them out. And that's pmtactical.com. Use the discount code Tonto, T A N T O, Tonto, for 15% off pmtactical.com. Discount code Tonto. From Omaha, Nebraska to New York City. From planet Earth to extraterrestrial life in space, a podcast with no equal, engaged in unconventional warfare through your speakers and headphones. This is a show about embracing the suck, conquering your demons, and finding God in the face of adversity. Chris Tonto Peranto. Switch is on. Motherfucker, I'm going to shoot you in the face. Ian Scotto. You know, Ian and I have been dead for a long time. <laughs> you are now tuned into. The Battle Line Podcast. The Switch is on Battle Line podcast. Very excited to have Chris Beck or Kristen Beck back on the show. First time that you are both going to be talking. Um, and, and I know, you know, they, they've been looking forward to it because when I first told at the time Kristen about the podcast, I remember, um, you know, they were they were saying to me, Chris is a patriot. I'm a big fan. And, and so I know um, they've always been a big fan of yours. Well, I, yeah, and, and that's nice for Nice for Chris to say. I, I mean, I ain't shit. Chris Den's probably more than I have. So um, either way, though, that's nice of them to say. And they will have, always have a good conversation. I love having veterans on and I love having veterans from the community and those. I th And, I, you know, and, and actually, Chris and I got back to get got going back together on Instagram about some of the relationships as far as teammates that we've had. Similar people we worked with were, you know, she talking about Sawman and Craig, Craig Sawyer and Craig was a teammate of mine on GRS and Granted, I said, yeah, I like Rowan a lot better than Craig, but that's, that's even, but that's that's the bench that goes. And so I think think we'll have a lot to talk about 
just just on the tactical side of the house and the operational side of the house because we have worked with a lot of the same people and and honestly to me that means that we probably easily could have worked together and done very very well I, and i believe uh, i believe chris even knew roan i can't remember if it's yes. roan or Bo, but i believe it was roan uh, both and, but both. judging by the interview i did last time it seems like had more of a friendship more with friendship with tyrone with, with roan and that that makes more sense because i don't think uh, i don't think chris was on team three which bob was and roan was uh yes, Blue group, team so. one and six and six so yeah i i i you know it's like anything else whenever we have another veteran on it's just good to to, to chit chat and go through and then things just come out ridiculous things come out like it, it, they can be of the completely sexual nature or they can be <laughs> of the completely jackassery nature too much alcohol nature or just seeing things on the ground that that most people good good thing they'll never have to see that you experience and and you can experience it together so you know it's it's something that brings back a lot of memories whenever i talk to a, to a fellow veteran and one that's an op that that was a tremendous operator from what i understand um that chris was yeah and and anytime i talk to chris you're saying where the podcast goes i already know it's going to go into conspiracy <laughs> territory it's going to go into psychedelics for ptsd territory because that's what chris is all about well, well, so I, I, we'll get I, some interesting and i want to hear chris because chris has a, is she's you know chris has come out on on the on the the manipulation of of gender therapy which yeah who would know better than somebody that's gone through it? that's what kills sure. me with that it's like holy shit now nobody's paying attention to chris because mm -hmm. they're it's not in the it's not in the woke side of the house and that's bullshit it's like and that's that's where I, 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 you know, I'd, I'd like to get into that too, which I hope we can. And I, I know, I'm I sure think, we will. I think Chris will probably want to, but who better to talk about shit like that than someone that's actually been through it? And yeah. that is who you want to listen to. But our, our society nowadays, you know, it, it's, it's, if it's not within your wheelhouse or not within your side that you want to listen to, it's not your side. You're going to completely shut them out. Even if you have no clue and that person has a hundred percent clue what's going on, you're still not going to listen to it. Well, guess what? Fuck you. We're going to talk about it anyway. And Chris is going to yeah. give, give her two cents. No, I, I feel the same way. And that's why, like, even when Lady Valor came out and yeah. they were on the complete other side yeah. of the aisle on this, I loved talking to Chris and I still am going to love talking to Chris regardless. Like to me, it's just a person that I respect that I think has a lot of great insight. Um, but I do want to talk about this. So everybody has been showing their Spotify raps. And if you, if we show up on there, if you guys listen on Spotify, definitely send it over to us. If we're one of your like top listen to podcasts, but they send creators one too. So Spotify is not one of our main, it's not, it's not even close to our main yeah. listenership. Apple is really where it's at because they're kind of the gold standard when it comes to the charts and all that. Uh, I know Spotify has charts now too, and they're basically trying to get in that same position as Apple, of the place people go to listen to podcasts. But even with that said, this is just Spotify statistics. So, I mean, these are the same for everyone else that we had 44 episodes this year, which is 4.5 thousand minutes of you and I running our mouths. Which <laughs> you can do the math there adds up to a lot. And on Spotify alone, we have a 61% increase on followers this year. And then oh. I thought this was the really cool statistic. Once again, this is just Spotify, which is a smaller platform for us. We've been listened to in 43 countries. I thought that was really cool. I think I think that's awesome. I think and I love I having having the uh, supporting base of of outside of the U.S. and yeah, I, I think now we're looking at it. I think that outside the U.S. has more common sense than the U.S. does now. Depends and, and, where. Depends and, where, because we might get into I, China, and I don't think they do. I don't think China listens to us. I I would really doubt that Japan, Taiwan. I think because the honestly the airsoft community loves thirteen hours, the, and the and the the Asian community where there's massive airsoft falling, and they love they love Tonto. I I have people and I I love seeing that where they'll send me pictures of them in their Tonto gear with shorts, and it's nice. it's usually from Japan or or from Taiwan or somewhere. That's not China. <laughs> so Australia and, a lot too, right? And Australia a lot too, and Denmark and 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 Germany quite a bit. There's actually the a German edition of Thirteen Hours that somebody sent me a screenshot of way back when it first came out, and I was like, man, that's cool as hell. So I love I love that and love having that, love seeing that because it, it just means the story resonated with every with people and. That, and whether as much as the, the woke side of the house tried to shut it down back, and they did, and to say that they didn't, they did. The left side tried to shut 13 hours down, and I still think they still still do in some aspects, not as much as they used to. 
but um, it's good to see that it still got out there. So, and it, it'll be immortalized. Ronan Bub and Kristen Sean will be immortalized in history forever around the world. And that's, that's awesome. That to me is the coolest thing right there. Not, not just the story, but their names will never be forgotten. No matter how hard people try, they will always be out there and they'll always be seen as heroes and, and American, and they are, they're American heroes, but they're heroes and they're personal heroes to me. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, and and as much as the show is kind of U.S. centric, I mean, we do sometimes get into Canadian issues. Uh, I would say, but um, we don't really talk as much about the rest of the world. So it's it's cool to see that we represent America on some small scale on a global stage. I think it's cool to see that people listen to this yeah. and this is their idea of of America on some level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're fuck we're fucking y'all up out there. We're <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think I think that's how. You know, Americans should be seen, should be seen as hardcore, should be seen as humble too, which well, I, I'm humble sometimes. You're extremely humble, dude. So that's, all. I, but also, but also, <laughs> you know, also the Jack Ashery that that's how I learned, right? The Jack Ashery from, from being an American, just being a, being able to be a goof because you're happy and you're laughing. And even in bad times, you're able to look at it and take it with a grain of salt and have to find some humor in it. I think that's a skill set that I think America's losing a bit, but I, I know I did. I know I grew up around that. And I've, obviously it, it transpired into me becoming more of a jackass and it led into the military side of the house as well. And, and, and so I, that's why when people do see 13 hours, you see the goofy, the jacket, the, 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 the off color remarks, the trying to make things laugh. That was real. That's what happens. And I think a lot of veterans that we do have them on, they'll tell you the same thing. They're like, yeah. But they don't show the, the laughter that goes on when you're under stress. And that is an American trait. And that shows resiliency and it shows uh, toughness. It shows mental and testosterone fortitude that this country honestly has been been steeped in for many, 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 many years. And I just hope we don't lose it. So that's a good thing. Yeah. It's not it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, and you're right. Even like the more serious episodes we've had on, there's there's always laughs. I mean, yeah. like last week we were talking about, you know, uh Sarah Carter's husband going blind in combat. We still yeah. had plenty of laughs. And and yeah. um I I want to make sure I get the name right. Was it uh Jonathan Hancock from the Marines who went on that? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that was a I mean, it was all about suicide awareness and su and the amount of guys you lost, and still we had we had like hardcore laughs on that show. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do think it's true. Like, I don't think people listen to the show and because uh, it's unfortunate. I think people listen to a lot of talk radio and politics and the feeling, whether you're getting something out of it or not, is like a lot of anger, a lot it's of anger. And it's what's drama. Going on in the country. It's, tra it's train yeah. wrecks. They want to see drama. They want to see train wrecks. They want to see the Kardashians. And, and that's not or, what or America Kanye is. This or Kanye. Or, 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 it's just going anything. on Alex Jones praising <clears throat> Hitler. <clears throat> Any just people love train wrecks in America. Let's say the I've said it a million times and I, I, on the show before. We don't make anything. We don't produce anything anymore in the U.S. except for train wrecks and drama. That's what we and, produce and Hollywood now. movies and Hollywood, which are train wrecks and drama. And our, now, our music part. too, though our music too. I, I will give you that. I, I I see I see people listening more to the the drama side. Of that we we've always had good music, but drama. And if you get know where I'm getting at, guys. We, we that's what we're that's what we're known for now really we're known for for we are we're known for the train wrecks that's why we have real out reality tv that's why the 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 podcasts that do extremely well are either politically motivated and they're one side or the other crush try to crush the other side or they're just they're just they just want to talk about people being fuck-ups and making fun of them or 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 not making fun of them and supporting them or it's it's ridiculous so uh you know, you can listen to us and see that we're fuck ups anyway, but we're still trying to be positive. So you're getting the reality of it right here. Yeah. And I think people generally get a fun vibe out of the show as much as we'll talk about important issues um, and, and leading into an important issue. I will say that the biggest issue, I think, going on this week that, that the world has been focused on have been the protests in China. And I have to say, man, God bless Twitter, because I think if it wasn't for Twitter, <laughs> we wouldn't really know what's going on there because real journalists out there like Gordon Chang, who want to expose what, what's going on in China, they're not allowed in the country. So it's really these people finding a way to basically go against the internet shutdowns there and finding somehow a way to capture on 
video what's going on and posting it to Twitter. And it's like, thanks to these people, thanks to what I would say are these citizen journalists over there, we are seeing them soldering doors shut during lockdowns, people jumping out of windows because they have no more food left in their home and they're not able to leave their home. And um, they were these are the same people that basically exposed what was going on with the Uyghur Muslims being sent on trains into what are essentially concentration camps. So I do think if it wasn't for Twitter, as much as you could say there's drama and all that on Twitter, we wouldn't know about a lot of this. I don't think it would be picked up on the news because no one is really there. It's very insulated and they have complete control over what's going on with their citizenry. Well, and they're but they're still going to have complete control. No matter what the world says, it's China. It's Chinese government. We're going to bitch and complain and do all this. What's the Chinese government going to do? They're going to do shit, dude. They're going to keep they are going to keep oppressing their people. If anything we can take from this, it's learning when to well, it's it's learning that to, we should never let a political party or politicians get so much power that they can do something like this. And and, and, and yeah, I feel I, I do. I feel I feel for the Chinese people because that's that. It's and and I, I want to say I'm inspired by the Chinese people, well, the Chinese see. people who are going out there protesting. It is not like protesting here during when we saw like the George Floyd protests, because you were not going to get killed by the government no. for protesting. And these people are literally protesting um, for their freedom and putting their lives on the line. And well, it's and inspiring. That's, that should that should <clears throat> that should be a a. Uh, a lesson for us to always learn from too. Don't give up our freedoms. Don't let political parties, whatever side it is, take so much control that they can do this. The lockdowns that we had, better, you know, I think twice about them again. Where is that going to? Government control. Government wants to control everything. The government always wants to control. And when they feel like they're going to lose control, if they have the ability to do so, like you're seeing in China, they're going to come at you with everything they can and they'll kill you. And, and that's just, that's the realism. And those that have served, the veterans that have served in the global war on terrors, has in all the have seen this so we understand it that's why i think when a veteran says hey you know we don't want government control on anything regardless whatever side it is they're coming from a place where they've seen it firsthand and they've seen what happened now people are actually seeing it at least on twitter but man i tell you being in the middle a lot of that too it brings some perspective and and that's why i come back here i just always say government doesn't need to control a damn thing uh they'd stay out of business just run the country but and and I did see the COVID lockdowns even here as some form of control. This is it's just a test, and I think we even talked about it. I think this is a test. I think a lot of people talked about it, and they call this conspiracy theorists. You know, but I, it's like, hey, this is a test to see what they can get away with, and and uh, you know, let's just take this Chinese thing. Let's learn from it and watch it and see what can happen if government, whatever party, guys, this is either party wants to take complete control. That type of shit can happen, and you see what the aftermath is. You're going to see complete anarchy and it could get worse and the thing with here in the states is it can it would it would it would probably turn into some sort of civil war just because we we do have the ability to bear arms where you know people in china don't uh, and but then again that's that's why they're being able to be controlled like they are so uh, i think they don't have any option you and i think the people in china they really are like we're at our wits end if i didn't have any food either i'd probably be yeah jumping out my window i'm going to get food fuck you we're going to go find it so well, I mean, um, they're jumping, they're jumping to their death. Well, I, you know, I don't think I jumped to my death. I would find a way to go find some fucking food and support my family. And if it meant getting into a gunfight with government troops to do that, then that's what it would be. And but I'm as not, you know, in China, there'd be no way to do it. I mean, they really have no options. So exactly. Their, their yeah. options in some cases have been suicide or starving to death. You know, and that's suicide to me is I've been through that, that, and that's, I've been down that road before and that will never happen again. Never. Suicide is not an option. Quitting is not an option. Um, but find but what, a way to but what do you do when the government is soldering your door shut so you can't leave your home? You find and, a fucking you find a way you find. A, and every, yeah, any I mean, I just don't know. I don't know what what way there really is when you're seeing what's going on there. And to be honest, it's there's nothing to really compare it to. I mean, we've seen government tyranny, but I haven't seen this exact same scenario I, that I really could think yeah, of. I, what we you, saw crazy lockdowns, for example, in Australia, and as nuts as they were, people were at least still able to like, you know, I say let people, but like they were allowed to like leave their home for an hour a day or whatever it was, which is ridiculous in itself. But these people are literally locked inside their homes and the doors are wired shut. What do you do? Well, it's let's let's just hope it. Let's just pray and pray and never will. And I don't see ever see it in this country ever getting to that level. Of, of course crazy, not. But I, I just I do feel for the people 
out there who actually have managed to find a way to protest this. And I do think it's great that we have journalists in America like Gordon Chang, who have been like really at the forefront exposing what's going well, let me, on. Let me let me ask you years. this: then. If they have found a way to get out of the house to protest, why are they? That's found the people. Out- that's the people whose doors aren't soldered shut. Aren't soldered shut. So they could. They they think of how many people are in China. You, you, so, how how long it would take to could, solder every single person's door shut? Could they find so you, a way you have to millions to get... of people who are able to leave their house, and you have millions of people who are unable to leave their house currently? Have they found a way to go get food to the people whose doors are soldered? I, I'm just being devil's advocate here. I'm just being. Deaf. I don't think. I don't think. Gro- I don't think there's that, and I don't know if they would have what are considered grocery stores there, but I don't think markets or any of that are even open because I, they're not gonna. They're not allowed to. They're not allowed to function. I yeah I, I don't know I'm I that's one place I've never been I've never been to China I don't know I'm just playing Neither I'm just I. I'm just playing devil hey we got the right to protest let's go protest well can we go get food for our neighbor if not but but again I don't you're, think you're, the people who could protest could even get their own food that's I'm now yeah, I'm just that just putting it out there I don't know I'm yeah. not trying to be a smart ass or get a gotcha dude I'm just thinking this is what we're doing remember we're, we get free thought here <laughs> I say well but but again. Fuck, let's just ever not let let's use this as an example to never let our country get to that point. And I don't see it ever getting to that point. I know there's a lot of people out there that might think it may get to that point. I don't foresee. No, that. no, that's ridiculous. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't I don't foresee that. And if we're wrong in 10 years, well, I'll be 60 some. So if I'm still doing this when I'm 60 some, then yeah, then you guys can come and punch me in the face. But I, I mean, America is a completely different kind of country. And I'm not I'm not bringing it up as a comparison to America. I'm bringing it up to bring attention to what's going on there. Um, well, we do have to get to Kristen back. I did want to at least mention this. I wanted to get more in depth. But I will say, guys, read about his story. You, there's It's a, a remarkable Hiroshi Miyamara, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but Medal of Honor recipient, dead at 97, uh, Korean War veteran, one of the last ones left, and uh, amazing story. Our like I said, I would have liked to have gotten to it, but we we have plenty to get to. We got to get to our interview. So uh, before we do, we'll be back, and I'll be back in Kansas in a week. We're going to fill out on studio. So we're going to be in Fort yeah. Scott. Fort Scott Munitions is a manufacturer of multi-federal patented solid copper and brass CNC spun ammunition. It's designed to tumble upon impact in soft tissue, leaving devastating wound channels for faster bleed out and quicker incapacitation. This ammunition was originally developed to innovate and improve on the standard of military grade ammunition design. It was found that not only did the TUI ammunition outperform competitors in the self-defense industry, but it quickly became apparent that it would be a top contender for hunters alike. With the ammunition being CNC spun, the tolerances are some of the tightest on the market, ensuring that you receive the same results with every pull of the trigger. Fort Scott Munitions is available throughout privately owned businesses in all 50 states. Go to fsm.com if you want to order online. And uh, you'll get 15% off through us. As always, use the exclusive promo code BATTLELINE. Only available to listeners of the BATTLELINE podcast. Fort Scott Munitions is a proud supporter of Chris Peranto, BATTLELINE Tactical, and the BATTLELINE podcast. It's as simple as that, guys. FSM.com, promo code BATTLELINE. And I mentioned Phil Otto. We're going to be training with Phil Otto from Photonist Defense. And it's actually going to be the first time when you think about it, that we've been in studio with a guest since episode one altogether <laughs> over three years ago. So I'm excited to have Phil on with us. Um, yeah, Farmer Phil, he's going to be an exciting guy. He's so exciting in, in studio, just as he is on camera. Yeah. I, I like <laughs> Phil a lot. He's Phil's, a good cat. No, he's a good guy. He's great, man. So yeah. uh, Phil works is, of course, as you guys know, we're familiar with the show for Photonist Defense, which is really the top of the line night vision out yeah. there. Now you can have the superpower to see in the dark with the Viper Binocular Night Vision System by Photonis Defense, which is the global leader in night vision solutions, providing more high-quality night vision capabilities than anyone. Military, law enforcement, and public safety end users <clears throat> utilize Photonis Defense solutions to give them the edge at night in tactical situations and rescue operations. Hunters, shooters, boaters, and enthusiasts can rely on the Photonist Defense Viper Binocular to help them become master of darkness, their trademark. The new Viper Binocular system carries the same features and benefits as the Photonist Defense Viper Monocular with a ruggedized 
body and harnesses the power of the echo intensifier tubes, giving you sharper images, reduced halo, and industry-leading ultra-fast auto-gating across the range of dynamic operating conditions. So uh, check them out. Real operators are using them. Yeah. People we've had on the show, Navy SEALs like Justin Sheehan. Yeah. And this is the best stuff out there. By far, best stuff out there. And for the course that's coming up with Phil, guys, this is a course that some people charge, and I'm not going to say who charged thousands of dollars <laughs> to come through a night vision course using lesser night vision than what photonist makes and you know it's what we charge 400 450 bucks to come out and use the best night vision in the world and learn from phil who's also a, a grs operator yes. with me and and, and and a marine as well so guys you're those that come to the course you're going to see the difference and you're going to see just it, it literally is night and day with photonist defense for those that don't if you're with law enforcement military check them out get them to your guys you're giving your guys the best chance to come home at night using photonis defense they're the best night vision and night optical devices on the market period absolutely photonisdefense.com that's p-h-o-t-o-n-i-s defense.com for more information or look for photonis defense product options from your night vision dealer photonisdefense.com there's and I'm you know what I'm gonna give you an introduction I, I was gonna say there's I like cheap, cheap best, pick so. I like cheese man <laughs> What's Chief, up? What, what are you guys talking about? What's up, Chief? Going on? Hey, I'm, I was just checking I'm, my settings. I'm You're talking good. about you fucking Navy SEAL fuck faces. That's yeah, what we got to talk about you Rangers. <laughs> Damn. You guys always say to lead the way. I don't know. Man. I don't, you shut your whore mouth. <laughs> man, don't, don't, the, go the, don't go the Marine side. Let's keep it. Let's keep the banter hey, fun with SEALs and Rangers. Hey, don't get all, hey, all Marine out on me. Hey, let's play a little Ranger game. Who has the oldest Ranger handbook? Oh my, I still got the blue one. Fuck you. I got the blue one that still has all the typos in it. Man. I got my original from 1984. Do you really? Yeah. You're you're old as fucking okay. You win, you cocksucker. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna keep dude. all of this in here because it's it's too exciting. But I will say for the people listening, which is the majority of people, go over to YouTube because like the background Chris has, the oh, room yeah, that yeah. you have is just yeah. epic. People are gonna want to see it. So so just giving you an introduction. I mean, I did see I didn't watch the whole thing, but I saw the Robbie Starbuck thing that was up. And yeah. I feel like people oh, listen- I guess we're doing a podcast, huh? Hey, we're yeah, we're well, I was gonna say I, I, I feel like, like it. people who listened to the last episode uh that I did, Chris Chris was you know recovering Sorry. could kind of uh could kind of you know get a hint of what was going on from you, but is I guess it's official now that you are going back to being Chris Beck. Well, I mean, it's it's like people say I'm going back, but I never really left. Never I just kind of, my head was wrong for a little while. It'd be kind of like, we have guys in the military, veterans, you know, and I have a veteran buddy of mine who had a real big problem with opioids and alcohol and a bunch of other stuff. And he had to go away to a camp, you know, and he was gone for like, what, three, four months. And I came back and he was like a different person, but he wasn't. He was back to being his old self. He was back to being square one without the drugs and without the alcohol, without the stuff messing him up. So if with the way people, and I don't know, I mean, I have a lot of apologizing to do. And I think that people who are alcoholics do the same thing. You know, you get drunk and you beat somebody up in a bar because you're pissed off about your wife kicking you out of the house and all the other stuff is going on in your life, you know? Yeah. And then you get sober and you look back on life and you go, damn, why did I punch a guy in the face? Well, it was because I was drunk first. And also I got kicked out of my house. I got that. I got that. I was just angry, you yeah. know, and it had nothing to do with that guy. And it's just a shame that there's things that we do in our lives that damage so many other people, the unintended consequences in life we never see. And Chris, you're right. doing the same thing with everything you went through oh, in Benghazi. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many unintended consequences that politicians especially never understand. Well, that's just gotta let doctors. the anger gotta let the anger fucking go. And that <clears throat> yeah. took me three three years. And actually, yeah. I did I, I I got in that bar fight. I actually had a bite mark right here from where that fucker bit. But I, I, yeah. I when you said the bar fight and drinking and I was smoking, I was yeah, I, I was a, but I, it too. wasn't because of the purse. It was I was just pissed as fuck off, just angry yeah. and and uh, so apologizing and uh, you know, apologizing to the right people apologizing yeah. to the people yeah. that matter Pol yeah. to the people that, that that maybe i was a dick to but yeah. there were some that deserved it Fuck yeah. yeah i am apologizing to you but the people like my wife and my my children definitely apologizing yeah. until the day I die. and i they yeah. deserve for me to apologize to yeah the day I die. so i get yeah. it yeah definitely get it the, 
The reason I bring it up, just to clarify, is it's interesting to me because I've only known you as Kristen Beck, and I've known you for like nine years. So for people who knew you longer, like, yeah, the person that they were, you know, people that I've met like Drago, they remember yeah. you as Chris Beck. They don't really know Kristen Beck. Yeah. So it's just interesting Drago. to me. But but for the audience, yeah, and I, for the audience, I should, you know, give them a refresher on, on Chris and, and who Chris is. Retired Senior Chief Petty Officer with SEAL Teams 1 and Dev Grew, I know as people know as SEAL Team 6, Purple Heart recipient. Yeah. And um, yeah, actually, since the last time that we were on and we were supposed to have Chris on with us, we were going to hang out because you were like, hey, we're not too far away. You should come out here. I'm in New York. Yeah. But people forget how big New York is. <laughs> yeah. And I got in my car and I typed in the address and I'm like, Chris, this is a six hour drive. Like, are you, I'm, are I'm you like pass. Northwest? Are you like the Syracuse area? I'm, or are you I'm south of Buffalo. So I'm like, oh, I'm right on the way to fuck out there. So I can throw a rock and hit the Great Lakes, you know. And oh, uh, how far are you away from the turning, t- turning stone? I just spoke at the turning stone casino. Is that what it's called? The, oh, yeah, yeah. That's in the yeah. Seneca Nation. Yeah, oh, yeah. My, that was a cool. That's all right out here. Is You're that, in my neighborhood. Yeah, I was beautiful. Yeah, I, I went awesome. out there. I would. I was like, man, this place. There's nothing out here. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, and this big fucking building came out. Of well, here's here's the beautiful. crazy thing: is everybody judges all of New York on New York City. Yeah. And oh, my entire like, county, yeah, the biggest not. city in my county where I live, is like eight thousand people. It's beautiful. So it's a, it's a tiny town. It's our biggest city. We go there and we look at the skyscrapers. They're four stories tall. <laughs> Mom, look at that. It's four stories tall. How do they breathe up there? <laughs> and that's where I live. New York City. I, I can't stand New York City. I want to cut New York City off and give it to New Jersey. Because if you look at the way the state is shaped, New York is not New York City. It's this little chunk of land yeah, yeah. sticking out more in New Jersey than New York. I'm they, just like, they, I can't stand it. It needs to go. And they need to make it like Snake Plissken did. They were yeah. from New York. It needs to be, it needs to be, just, that's where we're going to put all the criminals right there and but, wall it off. Sorry for But ask me where I started. I started out in New York City. That's kind of where I was born. So there's a lot of people. My family's from there. I, I know a lot of people there. Great people. But the yeah. city itself is a cesspool of politics. Yeah, it's and, just a, it's, it's like it's, Chicago cesspool, yeah, yeah. Los Angeles cesspool. Yeah, you know, and then you right. try to put the common denominator together. Why are all these certain cities cesspools? And people don't get it. They still just cannot see. I saw a little ad today. Where are the people moving? In? What cities are people moving out of the most? And this is I was on. I was actually on a weather channel, and it was said Los Angeles, New York, uh, San Francisco, Washington yep. D.C., and the fifth one. So uh, Detroit or say, Chicago. It was Chicago. I think it was Chicago. Chicago yeah. I think everybody moved out of Detroit. They already did that. They already took off. That's so true. <laughs> but I will I will say, I mean, as someone who goes to and from New York City, like this idea of like New York City is a ghost town now, like that's complete yeah. bullshit. It's never yeah. been more crowded. And I think there's a lot of people who moved out of New York City, came to places like this, like to Connecticut, to Long mm-hmm. Island. And then when the lockdowns and all that, you know, stopped. A lot of people moved back. So, I mean, there's, it's still good. Super Go crowded. back to the city. It's still New York city. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, I, yo, Hey chief. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to, I come, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna call you chief. Actually, anybody veteran that, that I, I see. chief sergeant or whatever. Look Dude, at chief. I've had chief. chief. I've chief. had chief as my name with the military of purple heart. I was one of the commanders there. And so we have like 40,000 members all purple heart recipients. Yeah. And one of our biggest missions is that nobody really understands is that everyone who's killed in action has a purple heart. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do is it's like a big, like a memorial. It's like, hey, these guys are never going to be seen that they, you know, got killed in vain, you know, and we're still here and we are darn close, you know, and that's why we got purple hearts. But it just said, it's that, that, that mission of making sure that stuff we're doing isn't just for some politicians' pockets. Yeah. And what we did and what you guys did in Benghazi was not something that some politician screwed up or somebody did that and that. We want to make sure that everyone that dies and everyone that did it, our brothers and sisters who were killed in combat. That's what we're trying to do in a Purple Heart. And when I was there, I was like, dude, I don't play these pronoun games. I never really have. I never cared about what people really called me. As long as you're respectful, you know. Yeah. You can like shoot. We we're just calling each other assholes, but we we're doing it respectfully, you know. <laughs> See, it's like, people don't get that shit. You can do that respectfully. You can. Huh? You can. And it, and so I've been going by Chief for like six years, eight years. I didn't want to mess with Chris or Kristen or all the other crap, you know, because who I am deep and below all that is Chief. If you ask anybody who I hang out with long enough, and when they start talking to me, they go, "Dude, you didn't change." And I says, "No, I mean, I I never really did." I was the same house. I just changed some wallpaper. 
And if you, if you look back on what I said, even when I started doing all this stuff, I said, I'm still the same house. I just changed some wallpaper, you know? And that was the Kristen stuff was like, it's just flowery wallpaper. And I'm no longer an angry caveman punching a mirror and trying to, trying to fight people all the time. And I said, so maybe, maybe instead of me being an alcoholic and, and having, you know, the opioid problem and have to go away for three months, you know, which would have been way better, but psychology was not supporting me. Yeah. What I did was way drastic, much worse than going away for three months to an AA or to one of them facilities. Even people go away to those places for years to try to get their full recovery. So I had no psychologist helping me out. I had psychologists actually telling me that I should do stuff. And I was like, well, it, it, was, it was really weird. And, and then people say that I have like this weak mind or I'm doing this stuff and I'm gullible and there's other stuff. But yeah. man, I tell you what, man, you get addicted to the opioids and you get addicted and you're a booze and you're doing all other stuff. You're also addicted to, to adrenaline and you're addicted to danger and you're addicted to not, not being around anymore because I saw like enough horrible stuff. And then I came back and then the way we left Afghanistan and the way we're treated in a way, and then the Vietnam vets will say they were treated worse and all that, but they treat us worse because they nice to our faces and then they're stabbing us in the back. What's well, manipulation? So I'd and rather be all- like the Vietnam vets and stab me in the front <laughs> and the back. At least the Vietnam vets knew who the enemy was. It was everybody. But now I'm walking around like a veteran in the VA and they're all like, oh, thank you for your service. It's that, that's what Vietnam gave us. Vietnam gave us a whole bunch of people saying, thank you for your service. We got the blue haired people running around with all the crap and yelling at us. And then they go, oh, thank you for your service. Respectfully. And then they start stabbing us. You know, I'd rather be a Vietnam vet and just have everybody stab me. Then I know who it is. Mm-hmm. You know, I hate the sneaky stuff. Yeah, they're so I- woke. They think they're doing the right thing. And it, tell I, and I don't know how much you guys got into that, but you went into and I and I do see a little bit of the manipulation. Actually, I saw even when I went through some therapy, and I did go through therapy at the VA myself. I walked in and said, "Hey, I need to I, take my phone, take this. I, I, I'm I'm yeah. fucked up." And they, but you do see that that manipulation, and that's what it is. It's manipulation. Yeah. Did you go into? I, I don't want to rehash something that we did in the last episode that I missed. Sorry, guys out there, I missed the last episode. No, we didn't really if, get if, into this. If if, good. We, if if we did. You know, and I think a lot of veterans, because there, there is this fucking, there's therapists out there that want to manipulate, oh, and it's for a mm-hmm. political gain too, or it's that woke side of the house. Yeah. Did you feel like you were getting manipulated? And and I I see your I see your posts, you know, and I I you know I follow you, dude. I, I consider us friends just because of yeah. who you served with. I know Sawyer, yeah. you know Craig. I work with Craig with the ACC. Oh, know. Craig Sawyer. Yeah, yeah. But, he's um, the best, man. But, but, uh, but and I said, I said, yeah, I like Craig, but I like Rome better. I did. I like <laughs> Rome better. That's all right. It's just, but um, Craig was a good teammate when we were at the agency, so yeah. I had nothing bad to say about Craig. But um, on the therapy side, because I, I and I know you did. I want so youngsters when they go in or they're having the yep. same issues, they don't get manipulated because I think they, I think some therapists do have a fucking agenda. And exactly. They want so yeah. what, what would you say to him or what did you, or give me, or if you got a story, a story or what would you, or yeah. man, dude, Hey man, this is your well, fucking stage. Yeah. I mean, we're, I mean, I'm, I get kind of fired up sometimes. Too. No, dude, I, this, I, stuff, I this is very personal. And, yeah. and the last show I was on and I was on there with Ian, Ian, sorry. It's Ian. Ian. Well, it's well, you Ian. Know, you've known I, me for like nine years. It's Ian. I, know. It's Ian. I have another Ian. friend. He spells it the same way, but he says Ian and he's a high school buddy of mine. So I keep messing you up. Sorry, it's just potato, tomato, <laughs> but, potato. It's the fucking the same. We're good. Two days. I'm not it's calling been you like, always been Ian. <laughs> hey, so um, so I I didn't know very much about psychology except through what I was trained in in the in the teams. Sure. And I went through all those agency courses yeah. and I became like that ASOT person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, when you do human in- intelligence, I was a human. And so I had to, I was interrogator, I had to do all of the questioning, I had to like gain sources, like a guy that I'd meet for yeah. the first time is supposedly an enemy and befriend him, get to know him. Yeah. And then pretty soon he's giving me stuff. And I'm like, yeah. well, how do you do that? You can't do that unless you have a really good grasp on psychology, on people, on reading people. I mean, I, there's things that they teach us how to read people that you just see like those micro expressions. You're really hard to read those, but we learn that stuff. I learned a, a twitch of a foot or when you move something, all these tiny little things, that's psychology. The thing is, is most people don't know that stuff. The thing that they learn with their PhDs become these instructors. I was doing my graduate um, studies, my master's degree in mental health counseling. Okay. This is when I started waking up. 
And so these PhDs have all of this stuff in their toolbox and they're trained in it and they do it every day. Can you imagine if it was like a, a, a elementary school person that picks up a gun for the first time, start trying to shoot. Yeah. And then you have one of us, you know, SMU coming in there and we're just whacking. I'm not even looking, I'm hitting bullseyes. I can peripheral vision, which sure. people don't believe it, but we learn how to peripheral vision shoot. Perfect. So I don't need to see the whole thing. I can do that and the headshot right on you right then. It's like, if I have the peripheral vision, I got the shots. I don't need full vision. That's how hard we train. The PhDs in psychology, they're at that level on mind fuckery. So what happens is you have these people who are like an elementary school kid, a young veteran that just did his four years and got out, walks into the VA and starts trying to talk to psychology. You're talking to that PhD person and they don't know anything about any of this stuff. Whatever that PhD person says, they can little twitches that and that they start reading stuff and start going boom, 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 yeah. and start building this new identity almost for this veteran based on what they're perceiving on their expert shooter skills, you know, as a psychologist. Now this is not fair. So I would say to all these veterans, as you go in, you need to educate yourselves a little bit. You need to look at like a little bit of human development stuff, which I learned when I was doing that master's degree stuff. And I'm not even close to being PhD because this stuff is so thick. Yeah. I never want to do that because as you study it, you become it. I think that everybody who's a psychologist at a PhD at a really big level, they're going to be a little screwy because they've been studying for so long. It drips, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. if, I'll tell you what, you know, Ian, when you're hanging around Chris and you're hanging around Chief, you're hanging around. I like that now, now I'm Ian because Chris How? confused. <laughs> it's Ian. Does it mess it up again? So yeah, check yeah, it out. It's, it's, it's funny to me that I've known you for this long, and for the first time, you're suddenly. Getting I don't know my what I'm doing. This so, might be part of the transition. I don't know, or the deep. Uh, there was never a transition. So, <laughs> so now I just lost my train of thought. Oh, so it drips off on you. These psychologists yeah. doing a PhD, they're getting all this stuff for years and years, years, ten years, twenty years of like hardcore psychology stuff. Freudian and Alfred Kinsey, that yeah. sick old guy. So <laughs> the um, so you're hanging around all these seals, all these rangers, all the other guys. How many times do people assume you're in the military? Yeah. And oh, how so tight you me? are with military. Oh. Yeah. It, oh, it, oh it, yeah. There's yeah. there's many times I have to choir. Because it dripped people. off on you became yeah. what you're around all the time. You're around sure. it so much you became it. Yeah, no, I've I've had to clarify for many people. It, it happens in the yeah. military, and it yeah, you, you have to be very quite often. Yeah, yeah you have to be yeah. careful with yeah. that too, because then people will think you're like a stolen valor guy if you don't yeah. clarify enough. It, it, I know and, what you mean. The the thing I just wanted to say, I mean, the thing that's interesting about you, and we'll get into other topics, of course. I think there's other important stuff to get into, but um, I mean, my introduction to you was the Lady Valor documentary. And they used that video of me, the audio of me speaking with you, where I said, when people think Navy SEAL, they think like the most tough machismo, like thing that you could do in the world. I, I, the don't, last I, thing don't, they... I don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I was saying that the last thing they think of is transgender. And, and I think there was a reason they used that in the opening of the movie, because I think yeah. it's what a lot of other people are thinking. And the reason your whole background, I've always respected you no matter what, no matter at what point in, in your life that I've met you. But the reason it's always been confusing to me is that if I look at Chris Beck on just a chart of who you are and what makes you who you are, it's like Chris Beck is a Navy SEAL, rides motorcycles, shoots guns, has always had like an attractive girlfriend. And there's nothing really... Uh, I mean, I know that you always say that there's parts of us that are feminine and masculine, but like on paper, you are way more masculine than I am, which is yeah, why it's always far, been confusing. Yeah. Which is by why far. it's always been Holy confusing God. to me. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's true, but it's true. On paper, I mean, all the attributes that I think make you who you are are traditionally, and I, you know, I know there's yeah. the whole the the thing is anything could be masculine or feminine now. We see like, you know, female MMA fighters, but I'm just saying mm. you're career and your interests and your interests have always been stereotypically masculine which is yeah. why it's always been confusing to me well i mean yeah i mean that's what i said the house is all the same just some wallpaper changed and what i had to do is i had to strip a bunch of wallpaper off put a bunch of flowers up for a little while and then strip it off again <laughs> to really find out what the bones are you know and and the bones that if you want to really know who i am anybody who's around me or, or like actually around me like enough time yeah just like i just want to live my life i wish i was amish sometimes i wish that people <laughs> would just leave me alone i just want to have my farm and just grow up and then when i'm out there talking to all these afghanis who i'd spent a lot of time with it's all they want 
And the only people that are messing up are all these governments. The only yeah. people that keep messing them up are these politicians. Yeah. Now, if we had no politicians, there was a bunch of people living around in the country and doing our thing. We'd all just be growing our veggies and trading at farmers markets every week. It wouldn't be a big deal. What happens mm-hmm. is you get into these cities and you pile each other on top of each other. You have to start controlling it. Control. Stop signs out. A, controls are in the country. Right we don't there. have stop signs because yeah. everybody's just driving tractors or just, Hey, I got <laughs> It's like driving, driving yeah. your side by side down to the, you know what street, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. so now, yeah. we're, now we have these huge cities and people are piled on top of each other. So we need politicians to control the fact that you did that. You did that. You start doing all this stuff. But that's why when America goes to war and we're over there in Afghanistan, why we're so messed up? Cause there's nothing we can give them if they want. That'd be like America right now going to war against the Amish, you know, yeah. and the Amish look at us and they go, wait, we're just over here in our horse and buggies and just minding our own business. We don't, we don't really care about you guys. You can have all your stuff. Just leave us alone. Leave us alone. Yeah. And that was most of Afghanistan until you get to the politicians. And all them politicians were buddies with who? All the American politicians. They're all in the same club. They all hang out together at the same spa. They smoke cigars together. Money. They're all rich together. Yeah, money. You know, and I can go into a lot of this, like down, down to the dirts. But I'll tell you what, if anybody out there wants to join the military, if, if you're an idiot, if you don't read about Smedley Butler, U.S. Marine Corps general, you know, at least read what he had to say. The man was in every war for everything, for all the beginning, most decorated Marine probably to ever walk the earth. And I have an autographed picture of Chesty Polar back there. And Chesty Polar was pretty decorated. But I'll tell you what, yeah. Smedley Butler, you know, and then there was a conspiracy that uh, they came to Smedley Butler, a whole bunch of these corporate leaders, the corporate giants. Rockefeller and Carnegie types, all those guys that at the time after World War I, they wanted to overthrow the U.S. government, do all this stuff. And they wanted him because he was such a trusted, great, amazing leader. Everybody loved him. He was General Smedley Butler. He, if he would have said to all his Marines, hey, uh, yeah, the American government's really screwed up and uh, we have all this backing. We have in the bank $50 billion. Smedley, that's what they're giving him, all this money. They could have taken over the country in like four days. You know, at that time, because he had the entire military in his back pocket. And so Smedley, being the patriot he is and kind of what I I am and I I try to be as much as I can is like that true patriotism is the Constitution, is is the amendments is saying, hey, these amendments are sacred. You know, we have these in place. You know, the first is there and it's a it's a good one. It's a great one. It has to be first. The second is making sure the first is protected. You know, and that's why they're in that order. And that's why it's so important that the Second Amendment is so important. Yeah. You know, so Smedley Butler, he uh, went to Congress and reported it, brought all the information that these guys are trying to do an actual coup, a real one, money in place, plans in place, all of the strategies, everything that was going on. It's in place. All Smedley had, Smedley had to do, the general had to walk in place and go, hey, I'm here uh, and start sending out the orders that would have happened. He gave them all the information. And then what happened? Nothing. So our FBI, uh, whatever it was in those days, and all the other people had all this information. These guys were actively trying to overthrow the American government. <clears throat> and what was that, like 1935? Yeah. I don't remember what year that the thing was actually put in place to move. He turned it all in. And nothing happened. Yeah. And so, you, you how corrupt is last, our government? Well, yeah, you, you mentioned it's, it's, on the last episode, Spedley Butler <laughs> and war is a racket and that whole thing. Yeah. No, you know what I was just going to ask? I'm sorry if I interrupted you, Chris, because I was just going to say, I mean, I think for Chris, like you kind of come to the same conclusions. And I think people have of like, for example, we have we have reasons of like, why are we in Afghanistan? I think way more questions about why we're in Iraq. But then for you coming back and you've expressed on the podcast, like, why were we in Benghazi? What was the reason yeah. for being in Libya? Why did these guys <laughs> die? And it's sort of the same thing that, that I think Chris yeah. is talking about. I, I, I think I think if you serve enough time overseas, I, I, and, I, and I feel think Benghazi, but they forget I, 10 years I was overseas before that even happened. And yeah. and you do see behind the curtain. You, wow. It's like the, I, I use that analogy, the Wizard of Oz. You do. You finally mm-hmm. see after the first couple of years where it is something bigger, patriotism, let's go defend our country. <laughs> and then after three, you're like, what the fuck are we doing? And then when you get attacked by the same group that you're giving weapons to by our own government, then you realize, all right, we're not doing this for patriotism anymore. But yeah, we, actually that's a good segue in and what I want to ask you. 
when did you see that? When did you finally, what deployment were you on where it finally clicked? You're like, or was it when you came back and that's when you saw behind the curtain? Because I know you have. I just, I follow you enough to know that you've seen behind the curtain, but was it when you were still yeah. deploying or was it when you came back and a few years after? Well, when, when was that? I mean, you have to kind of see the buildup of it. So you have yeah, Somalia yeah. 93 yeah, and you yeah. see that. And that was pretty righteous. We were over there trying to restore hope. We were well, trying to give the food, trying to help these folks out. Then you see what the warlords start doing. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. And look at the microcosm of Somalia is the world. You know, you have people trying to do good stuff, but then you get a bunch of warlords. And once the warlords are involved, that's basically every country is a warlord, yeah. you know, and they're all trying to get as much as they can for their country to yeah. do their thing, but they're going to crush and kill everybody they can to protect that. That's a perfect Even their example. own people. Perfect. So example. If it was my country and all the food was delivered and it was dropped right in the middle of, you know, Kansas, the entire country would convene on Kansas. And then the government would be like, no, no, we have to control this to make sure everybody gets a little bit. Is, yeah. And we have to also get ours. And so they start killing their own people to keep them away from Kansas in order for them to dull it all out. Yeah, yeah. And so that's been going on around the world for centuries, you know? And so that gets into the whole thing. So that, so the only reason I'm bringing that up is what I saw was going on there until everything started going to hell. But it, we, we try to do the right thing, you yeah. know? In America, we really do. And especially at the lower levels. At the high, high levels, that's where a lot of cahoots is going on and weird yeah. stuff. But when you get down to, you know, 06, you know, Colonel Captain and below, we're all doing the same thing. We're just saying, oh no, we're building that roof in that church. We're yeah. giving all this food to those folks. Yeah. Wherever mm -hmm. you're, we're doing a lot of good stuff and it's good hearts. And so that's what I joined, you know, and, and it went on for the whole time. I was in all kinds of countries doing all kinds of things and it was helping out their <clears> military. It was building something here. It was doing that. It was all the FID missions, you know, in foreign internal defense. And the only way we can build a better world is for a lot of FID. Yeah. So it should only be a defense, an internal defense. So America, the um, who was it? The, the Monroe Doctrine. You know, if we would go back to what we were doing in the beginning, it was like, hey, this is our hemisphere. Just leave us alone. Leave us alone. You, know, you yeah. Europe, Europe, stay over there and just do your own thing. And then you would have said also the Far East. Hey, Far East, you get. Yeah. And if you split up the whole world like that, all the Americas, we're pretty similar. You take all of Europe, pretty similar. Africa, pretty similar. Yeah. All of Asia and, and East Asia, all that, pretty similar. And that's pretty much the zones. Just don't mess with our zone. Yeah. yeah. You know? And the thing is, is like we keep going over in other zones where people live totally well, different. That's because, that's because the politicians can't stay out of everybody's zone. Exactly. They they got, I want to control. I, I, Obama was a perfect, and he, he's going to yep. get away scot free for. But that dude wanted to, and I, I eight years under him over there yep, doing. Me too. He he wanted to control. We were we were destabilizing nation after nation to control to control. That's why we yep. were in Benghazi. It was why yeah. we were in Libya. Was to, to stabilize. We got Egypt. Let's destabilize Libya so we can go into Syria and take over take over Assad shit. Let's just destabilize the whole, and then we can get into Yemen and fuck that place up. People are letting him get away. Scott, and they just, I don't, I, I still. And he shot more, don't. more missiles, more, more rockets, missiles, more, more everything. More drone, like, we had more drone strikes and we were killing American citizens which were in Yemen. There were yeah. two of those. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, I, I cut yeah. you off. You, you, run, oh, run no, no, down. I want to, I'd rather hear you talk and I think everybody out there wants to hear you talk too. No, fuck no, but, dude. I, but to, I, fin no, to no. finish that off was that we are, we really try to do the right thing. I think we so. try to do really good stuff as Americans. We're good people. But when we grow over there and we start messing with that, and the biggest thing I started seeing in Afghanistan, the brown and root and the money and all the, the huge amounts of waste. And then you start seeing it just like it was sickening. Yeah. And you see these super fobs, you know, <laughs> and then I, I watch these people come on these super fobs and I'm at a fire base. I'm out there in the middle in a truck, you know, with three Americans and with all Afghan commandos. Afghan commandos we're on yeah. top of one of those, you know, the BCPs. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you yeah. what. So, yeah, because we ran in the same groups. Yeah, yeah. So, GRS, BCPs, and all the other good stuff. But so I was doing all that stuff. And, um, but, you do, super but you do feel like you're doing because I, I still miss those. But those, oh, yeah, yeah. I want to go back and talk to those guys. They're great dudes. Sit, sit up and fucking chew it, chewing some, not, not caught. I didn't do caught, but I did not swear. Yes. I would do not swear with them. And, 
and fucking sitting in Las Cagar and just sitting. So you never made it to Djibouti, huh? Djibouti, I, Africa. I, I did. Yeah, I did, mate. But I just wouldn't do the. Con- I wanted to. Yeah, I didn't cot's do terrible. Yeah, I don't oh, even. I, know, touch I was like, oh my god, that's beautiful. Yeah. But well, what what is it for? I so mean, if you I'm go up to Machu know. Picchu and you'd be chewing the coca leaves. Sure, coca, it's, it's oh, okay, okay. Cod, cod is an amphetamine. They used to they dip before they go into battle. It's Somali big yeah. time, and but in it's it's in Africa the most. Now Swar is a is a dip. It's like almost like a little yeah, powder, yeah, and it came in a little. But that shit fucked me. I did that one time. Holy shit. I'll stick to Copenhagen, guys. You take your Nussoir. I don't need that yeah. shit. But, but check uh, it out. Every continent. Because if you go down to Machu Picchu and you're know, hiking along all those trails oh, and you got those Coca-Lis. guys, they're all eating. they eat just eat them. It's the same equivalent. Every continent, every place you go, if you start foraging and looking at what your nat- nature grows you, there's going to be pretty much everything you need growing on the ground. You know, and people don't, I'm a big, I do a lot of foraging and um, I, I eat like almost all natural that I make myself now from what I pick throughout the year. That's and awesome. then that's what I'm doing a lot of that. And plus the far, local farmers that were growing and all that. I can almost live fully with zero processed food at all. Wow. You know, not even touching anything from a store or anywhere. So wow. totally doable. It's not very hard. You know, it's a little bit of knowledge, but I'll go, what were we doing? Oh, cot. Um, no, no, no. Oh, Djibouti, Eritrea. Trying, oh my God, Eritrea, the, Africa. We went to the Djibouti and stuff. The Djibouti. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of. There's, there's some good. But there, you know, actually, one of the teams that we were trying to get a hold of that night was in Djibouti, and I can't remember if it was Team Eight or there was a team down there that we were yeah. trying to, trying to, and they were trying to assist. That, that, I don't even want to get into that. Probably on the Cree. They're the Cree fast reaction team. That's it. And they yeah. were, they and they. Yeah, were I was trying, on that for a while. They were, it changes they, teams a lot. So you don't. Is that really what it does? Either. They were good guys. They were trying. There was a lot of teams yeah. trying to get to us, but. Yeah. Hey, 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 I know we're, we're going, I, I, we really didn't talk. And I wanted to know just personally, because of my relationship with Roan, you work with Roan, you talked a little bit about, can, can you tell me any stories? And this is for me personally, if the crowd doesn't like it out there, tough shit. I want to know. No, they, they love it. They but um, it. Um, did you, do you have any stories with, with Roan was a tremendous guy, but I got the word and I didn't know this when he was first in, he was a mean son of a bitch. He wasn't <laughs> with us. He was, it was actually really, he was like the father figure for, for me, yep. anyway, at least but yeah, yeah, but early on, people would tell me, are you sure that was the right Tyrone? Because Tyrone was the fucking <laughs> devil, as guys would tell yeah. me. Yeah, he, he, like he was. He was pretty hardcore. Well, here's the thing. Is uh, SEALs, we're water rangers, you know? <laughs> our, our basic battle tactics and the way we move, we're a small unit tactics all based Same on rangers. And I'm, I'm not just blowing smoke for you or anything. No, no, I'm just no, telling I, you the truth no. of it. I, I, so now go back to when you graduated ranger school. Right when you got out of ranger school, you were full of piss and vinegar, and you're probably pretty angry, freaking hardcore. I was, dude. I was a tap spec four, and spec four mafia, yeah. dude. Y'all was fucking me. Oh, damn, yeah, you're young. That's, that's so, but that was it. Yeah. And so every time you hear about me, you're gonna hear tons of stories about how I was probably the meanest son of a bitch you ever met. <laughs> and and I was like a hard driver, and I did that, and I did that, and it's pretty much every seal for a while. It depends on the mission too, and what we're doing. Sure. Sometimes you have to really turn it on. You know, oh, and then yeah. you just go. And if you're in a position like as a chief or something, you, you have to be the bad cop pretty much all the time, you know? And so what are you supposed to do? If I was a chief at what years was I? 10? I was a chief at 11 years wow. in the military. That's pretty good. And then I made senior like three or four years later. And so I was running stuff and I was still full of piss and vinegar because I hadn't gotten to that time when yeah. I had enough deployments under my belt. That's what happens to rangers sometimes too. Yeah, if oh, you yeah, have that real young ranger that goes real fast because he's a hard charger, you know, he's still full of that piston vinegar. So like, you don't have that. You don't that. You don't have that maturity, that wisdom of when to hold yeah, back, of exactly. when to actually be a, be a leader. You're just yeah. a, you're an angry. No, I was I was. So like, so you caught Roan when he was already through a lot, and he was already like that's okay. what. If I was in the military right now, I'd be. It's, or if they would have caught me, maybe five years or a couple of years after retired, rather than that twenty, I just needed a little more seasoning. Like I had enough freaking battle time. It's like, how much seasoning do you need? Freaking idiots, no, God. But, but I think that's what people don't re- don't. They always forget that, you know. That I, I have sections of my career where, man, it was just like, don't even mess around, because if it wasn't done exact and it was right there, I was on it, and then. You were probably doing some PT while I was trying to fix everything you messed up. Yeah, they felt that you, that your team felt the wrath because you, yeah, yeah you, you're, you don't have time but to fuck around. Your I was the you know. dive soup jump master. I did. I mean, I did everything. I'd already qualified at the highest level, so every evolution, I was a safety inspector and having to make sure that 
everything was exact. That's but it stress. wasn't exact. People die. Yeah, stress, you know? stress, high stress, high yeah. stress. Oh yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. It was, and I trained all those guys. And shoot, I had some guys that they still are mad at me about this. But we were doing. I was in charge of all the boats and motors and all that. And when we were doing on uh, on recoveries yep. onto a ship, you're hitting those boats up on a tailgate of a ship, and you're whacking the motors and doing that. We did it for a few days. And I'd already tore down the motors, the bottom ends, and redid all the gaskets, redid the whole thing with my few guys that I had working for me. And so we did all that stuff for a few days, and we were hitting those motors hard. And so I said, all right, so um, we're done. We have a week. Uh, Every day, tear down one motor and redo the entire bottom end. And those guys were so mad because they were like, well, we just did it this like a month ago. It's not the inspection schedule. We don't have to do this for like two years. I said, dude, we're on an arc, we're in the middle of the ocean. If these engines break for any reason, you're fucked. We, we're we're dead. Yeah, and yeah. I said, we just did a bunch of boat offs on the ramp, doing all this stuff, tear down the <laughs> entire motor, and I'm gonna inspect it. Show me all the parts where it's torn down. Cause now I don't want them to, like skip and like take shortcuts. So those guys were so pissed. I'm on the back deck of this freaking um, LHD with a huge open bay with water, slide, all this stuff. These things are huge caverns. And I'm down in there, and one of them says, and he calls me out. And so we get on the back deck of the ship and we're getting ready to throw down. And he's right in my face. And he's a new guy. And I've, I've already done like, what, six <laughs> platoons or something. So I've been doing it for a long time. So I'm like, all right, dude. And I said, he's going to get a few hits in and I'm going to get a few hits in. And we're both going to be really bloody and probably hurting really bad. But I'm, yeah. I, this is my motors and my deployment and my nobody's going to die because our motor breaks. Because the stuff is not maintained. Well, it's your, it's your responsibility. If somebody exactly. fucks up, it's not him that's going to get in trouble. You're so those guys, trouble. Justin and Justin and Bill, they're going to laugh their asses off. But it was a thing. It was like, dude, got to do it. So we did it, and we did. I ended up not fighting, but it was like we were like, it was like it was close. Most, most time, guys come to their fucking senses, or you go in the squad room and you and you have it out, and that's it. Well, like, because you figure it out, it's like yeah. if we fight, we're both going to be off the deployment. We're both probably going to have broken bones. Yeah, we just left our <laughs> platoon with two people down. Yeah. Because you don't want to fix a motor. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what happened was to... no, no, I go, left go, the go, go. I left the platoon finished up. And these guys, because I was training them to take over the whole department, all of them in their own platoons. So these guys split up and go to a bunch of different platoons. And then now they're in charge of the motors. You know what they do? Everything exactly Everything like I showed them. Down. And you yeah. know what happened? They turned in their motors to a new platoon. And other platoons will pick up the motors, they switch out. But those guys cherish those motors so much because we worked on them so hard. They were such perfect motors. They kept them for like three or four platoons straight. It never happens. Because they were like, we're dedicated. These are the best motors. And it becomes something that you just have to do stuff sometimes. And it sucks. But it's, I'm the bad guy. Because but I almost you, got in a fight with a guy to change a motor out. But your life depends. Your it was life a position, depends on dude. It. Exactly. And your life yeah. depends on it. I remember yeah. break, breaking down weapons, breaking down gear. Exactly. Fucking every. Hey, let's go break down gear again. Fuck, we just did it last week. Well, we need to make sure it's in pristine condition because we might need it. They might get a recall here. Bravo notification. We're out the door. Yep. You, you you have yeah. to. I, I think it's life take, and death. It, it is. Yeah, and, and in the but, long but run, here's it a funny thing. Like. I, I was just going to say in the long run, it sounds like they valued that. And I'll let you get back to what you're saying, but I was just going to say, I wanted to get back to Chris's original question. Of they did on hindsight. They only value it on hindsight after you almost fight to get yes, it that way. Yeah. But I want to get back to what Chris now, was saying with 13 uh, year old kid. Sorry, just 13 year old kid right now that's here that I'm doing this to. And then I start kicking myself because I'm just like, dude, it's not a seal platoon. We're not going to die. If you didn't close that door, your light's still on your bedroom. And so I'm, I'm honest. And he's like, and, and he gets mad at me. And I'm just like, just turn your light off. Turn your fucking- and it's like, <laughs> nobody's going to die. And so that's the other part is we got to turn it off. It's like, thank God, you know, Roan and some of us, we grow up and we chill out. You know, I still find myself sometimes I'm like, turn the light off. That's what I do. Yeah. My and then you got this 13 to go, oh my God. And it's like, Oh, dude, I'm sorry, man. It's not my, it's my not daughter. My daughter's the one that says my sons are actually my seven year old. He's finally got it. He's like, just I don't want dad. Just just do what he tells my yeah, daughter. though. No, my daughter says that <laughs> we're not going to die, dad. I got I got I was like, oh, God, just, you're not paying for electricity in this house. Turn the light off. Dad, we're fine. But but you're right. You know, it, it's it's and it's it's that mature, you got to turn it off. Yeah, yeah. No, but go, go ahead, Ian. I'm sorry, but I cut you off. But. No, no, no. That was it. I was just saying I wanted to get back to your original point of Ty Wood stories because you, you gave yeah. me one last time and I, I, I don't know if you have any other good ones. No, nah, I just 
the only thing I would say about about him would be he was he was a hard charger. He, he did, did everything right. He, he was had the biggest heart of gold and all that. And the thing is, is like I think you'll probably say the same thing in the Rangers and in the SEALs. We train and we do stuff to such a high degree that you could say that about almost any of yeah. the SEAL team guys. You can say that about almost any of the Rangers. There's only a couple here and there. And that goes to the ten percent rule. Well, there's a, there's a bad there's a bad apple. Yeah, there always is. Always it's the ten percent rule, and yeah. you have the same ten percent rule in the Rangers. Mm-hmm. You have the same ten percent rule in, in the world. You have ten percent who are great. You have eighty percent who are awesome. They do everything they have to do. They're not great. Then you have ten percent turds. You know, <laughs> yeah. and the world is split up like that. It's unfortunate that all the turds go into politics. You know? <laughs> That's so true. But That's so fucking the true, the man. biggest thing is is like. In the SEALs and in Rangers, that top to present, the great ones, those are the ones that are like doing a really big lead and doing amazing stuff. And you have all the rest of us. That's 90% of the SEALs. If anything ever happened to 90% of the SEALs, I'd be like, great guy, man. Heart of gold. He was the best hard charger ever. And you're going to find a lot of guys when you ask them about me, if they can, you know, look past some of the the past few years. But in the teams, I was part of that 80%. And sometimes I was able to get into that top 10%. With like technology and that weird stuff I did, yeah. the OGA stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. the Good OGA stuff. stuff, I was in the top 10%. They were asking me to do special missions That's just true. to make stuff happen because I was a weird SEAL. I was that tech SEAL that I was electrical engineering in college and all the other stuff I did. I just like doing the microphones and all the, <laughs> the, the weird science stuff. I do you like know, the road microphone. I have red I mercury and one. magnets and I'm doing these things where I'm making my own energy. Yeah, you know? I, I, I love having rangers like that the smart we call them the smart rangers the fucking smart rangers yeah he yeah. got it you go do the he the, the, the techie guys that can just do all the shit with the radios and i was never like that i learned how to yeah. i remember first starting to learn on the 117s and i, I remember when harris first came out with that those fucking yeah. and I, I went and got certified all in all but i still would never very good at it so it my like first one was a prick 77 and a 104 Holy shit, so we use 77 for VHF you're, short and then 104 for yeah. HF long. You're fucking old as yeah. dirt, dude. You know that, right? <laughs> you know what a Nevis antenna is, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, but that's the thing is, like, I don't know that. Don't let Prano do that shit. No, let somebody else. <laughs> he'll I'll break it. No. Yeah, he'll, I think that's literally what it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wanted to ask because I saw one, we, we had a little, you know, post and you mentioned something. And I thought that was really cool how small the world is is you work with Dan Simpson. Dan Simpson is the one that oh, trained, yeah, me, yeah. trained me up to go through him and Randy Leonard, horsecock, Randy Leonard over there. Oh, God. Yeah, Randy, Randy those two, and I was very, and I'm, when you mentioned it, put a smile on my face, because those are the two that got me trained up to, to get to the agency. And I was so yeah. blessed to be around great, great leaders, great. Now, I, yeah. I, and, and then got, they had, Randy had his faults and all with, when he got in the corporate side of the house with, with Blackwater yeah. and all, but as far as operators go, they were tremendous teachers. They trained I mean, like I, the top 1%. That's like, oh, now you're talking like way, way up there. Hell of good yeah. shooters. And I couldn't have all asked for guys. people to train me up. Yeah. So when I went through the CIA vetting courses, it was like, this is easy. Yeah. Hey, yeah. These guys. Cause so, you already did it. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they put me probably through harder training, just yeah. the shooting portion than the, than the training that I went through when I went through yeah. the see, but did, were you on the team with, with, De- with Dan or was dirty? No, Dan that was like you? way after. And that was more, uh, the advanced, some of the advanced training some of the advanced when they had stuff going on. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. cool. Well, I, so it was like, when you go to like Shaw's, you go to the shoot houses and all that. Yep. Yep. You know, and they, they basically built that place. No, and all the guys from Bragg and damn neck back in the yep. day, you know, <clears> and so, they, and they were tremendous. Now, I, was, I just, yeah. it just, I wanted to bring that up to everybody out there. And if you're listening to Dirty Dan or Horsecock out there, a lot of respect to you all. Cause, uh, cause yeah, they, they, that was, yeah. they put me through. And that's how I got through the TDC yeah. stuff. It was, it was a piece of cake. I just thought it was really cool, man. Fucking well, that was the same thing with like Marcinko, was I ran in him pretty a while after, you know, and then that was more just, you know, just old stories, I guess. And then lesson <laughs> learned. I have, I have some audio of, uh, of, of dick it's about almost four hours of audio <clears throat> with us just bsing oh wow and well, yeah. he's why, got why these vietnam recorded? stories what's that why, why like why was it recorded what was it recorded for it was just we were just sitting around this group and it was like and i was like hey uh what do you think if somebody just recorded for posterity someday you know some of the stories you're telling us were like he was talking about the stuff he was doing in vietnam with some of these uh these provinces and these guys oh it's just 
it was off the wall amazing stuff can, can you talk about any of it i mean <clears> any, or is it all or is it, i don't, I don't want to get i don't want to get him in trouble are you in trouble I, and i want to make you can't get him in him. trouble now i mean he's not here no. anymore well right. well that's the thing is like I'd, I'd rather do it with like dirty dan or a bunch of those guys and just give it to the give it to the team and say this is a legacy you know that's there cool. are so many stories in that in that four hours we were drinking man he was on a whole bottle of uh but he always drank to Bombay. <laughs> he was he was like a bottle and and the guy would it was it just what he did. I think if he stopped drinking, it would have been dangerous for him. Cause it's like, and I know it's like I have relatives that were the same thing that you just do it so much, it just becomes part of that part of the routine, and your body gets used to it. And you're just like, hey, that's normal, you know. This is what I use for fuel, you know. Our bodies are amazing, you know. Yeah, and it's I, and it's it didn't hurt him, which is the other wild thing. You know, he just, I got a chance to to meet Dick Marcinko like very briefly. He seemed like a very interesting guy. Like I spoke oh, yeah. with him about two times. The funny thing was, I don't I don't talk to him anymore for whatever reason. He doesn't talk to me. But like Mike Ritland had a crazy Dick Marcinko story that he said when he met Dick Marcinko at a book signing, he said to him something to the effect of like, "Oh, I, I want to do what you do. I want to become a Navy SEAL." And he said Dick Marcinko had some like kind of asshole response to him that was like, "Oh, you and like the fifty other guys behind you." And I remember Mike Ritland saying like that actually inspired me to become a SEAL to be like, all right, yeah. I'm going to prove that I could actually do this. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's exactly what he would say too, because he had, <laughs> he was the king, man. When you're around him, it was like, when you're around a boss like that, you're just like, he just exudes that bossness, you know, you just want to listen to him talk, you know, it's like, okay, let's hear another story. And so we just sat around and he was just telling stories. It's just hours and hours of stories, Vietnam. And after Vietnam, he talked about how he set the team up. He talked all about the red cell stuff and a bunch of stuff that was, it was like, it was so deep and I don't deserve it. But because I was that weird techie, I recorded it. So I was like, Hey, I have all the recording equipment here. Yes. I have them on video too. I brought my cameras and stuff no shit, and I did this little awesome. interview with them and uh, I never gave it to anybody. I never released it. I just, I don't deserve it. It's like, Dude, I, I wish it was a way that the team had something that was cleaner for like the association or UDT seal association or something where it wasn't such a money thing where I just, you, you know, know his, I mean? uh, his, his son it. is, his son is on Twitter because when Dick yeah. died, I was, I was trying to get him on to come on the show. Oh, I, I have like, all their phone numbers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cause I was like, if yeah. you want to come on, but he never got back to me, but like, yeah, his son, Matt Marcinko is on Twitter yeah. and like, maybe he would want to hear it, you know? No, I just, it has to well, be something special. But it, has to, and something but it would have to be produced too. Uh, well, we're uh, way off the sidetracks now. Holy cow. No, bro, that's, but that's what's so awesome. That's but but this is that, also the legacy sure. that we lose a lot of times is that we don't have enough times where we could just sit down and tell these stories and then have it somewhere because people want to hear this stuff. Here they're like the real, what was I really thinking? Yeah. It's going to be really hard to get on, on tape because I'll only really talk about it if I'm in a more private setting and not doing this where I'm like trying to like dance around for the audience. It's like, <laughs> but it's, it's entertainment. And I think that's what happened to news. What's happened to all of us that we're all looking for this something. I get people even telling me that I'm making money off all this shit. You made so much money off your book and then you're doing this, you're doing that. The only reason you did was for money and popularity. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I said, I'm in debt from that stupid book. You know, because I had lawyers trying to make the book go away. I was trying to cancel it, you know, and it cost me a lot of money with lawyers. And then for publicity or making money, I had a two hundred thousand dollar year job before I in 2011. I, I, I tell people, I just say, I, you don't make a lot of money off books. And then even the movies, I mean, if it was maybe just me, but when you have six guys, you don't yeah. make shit. And I, I, I told yeah. you, I would have made just as much money in two years if I would have kept contracting. Then I made yeah. on all the money that I was given for a book in the Heck movie. Yeah. But, but let, let the fucking hate. But they, but they all think it's like these motives or something. They think that, oh, you have a motive, you have an agenda, you have this. And it's like, what if my agenda was just to be try to be happy to try to figure something out? And what if my agenda was I was I just I was stuck and I was like so addicted to so much crap. And then I got into a really bad place. And a psychologist said, Hey, how about this? How about because that? the thing is with them is if you give them a hint then it's like, give them an inch and they get the mile. Yeah. And so I told him a little bit about what was going on mm -hmm. when I was a kid and some of the other stuff. And then it starts turning into like this really, and I don't want to go into all the details, but there's, give some people a break. You know, they were showing this stuff where things happened 10 years ago. 
And then people are being hung out to dry because of something they said 10 years ago. It's like, well, can I learn something? Do people have you, evolve? Uh, yeah. Have, yeah. Have you talked to any of the SEALs who kind of uh, had an issue with you being Kristen Beck? Because I mentioned Drago earlier, right? And like all the SEALs had an issue with me. I don't think that's true, though, because I mean. No, no, I'll tell you why it's true. Okay. Every SEAL had issue with it up to that point when it was like, but you're still a SEAL. You're still a human. And I respect you. And I have compassion for you. And is there anything I can do to help you out? Yes. And so take it up to about the 70% mark. If you do 100% have a problem, that's the people that just want to fight you and beat you up because you're offending them. And that's what the world's turned into. Everybody thinks that if I'm offended, then, I, then I, that's a, all offended. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm really offended, but you're still a person and you still have a heart. You're still, okay, well, you're still my friend. I don't want to hang out with you anymore, but do you need anything? I'm still here if you need something. So you know? my, I'll be honest, like my feeling behind the scenes, hanging with guys who are Navy SEALs. And, and look, I know you because of Brandon Webb. Yeah. And I think Brandon Webb always had respect for you as a person, at least like at that time. When, yeah. And But there were guys, and I mentioned Drago, like I said, and Drago is a very like old school Polish guy. Yeah. And I can't really yeah. do a Polish accent, but I remember like when you were brought up, I'm just being honest. And I think this is all on record, like things that he said on podcasts. He was like, with Christine, I'm disgusted. I'm horrified. Like, but, but he would always say, but Chris, he was like, Chris was a great team teammate. Yeah. And like, there were guys like that in the community. Mm -hmm. It seems like who, during those years where you were Kristen Beck, they were like, this is a disgrace. I don't like this associated with our community, but yep. Chris was a great Navy SEAL and I'll cherish yeah. that. But so no I'm wondering, have, have any of those guys like reach back out to you or you reach back out to them and said like, Hey, let, let's, let's hang out sometime. Let's, you know, get back together. I'm <clears throat> I the same person I always was. I'm still like, I don't want to be on here and I don't want to be on CNN or any of this stuff yeah. Yeah. ever if I can help it. But I got kind of trapped, you know, if you figured what happened to me in 2000, what, what year did that happen? It was 12, 13. Yeah. It was right around so, there. Yeah. Like 10 years ago. So what happened to me 10 years ago, it was Navy SEAL, transgender, women, yeah, and everybody was spinning up. I lived in Florida at the time. I had news people knocking on my door, uh, like nonstop, like people calling me and emailing me. Everything, everywhere I turned around, I had some other freaking little agency, news agency doing something from a small town. And it was like, oh, my God. And I also had ABC and all of them and CNN with Anderson Cooper. And so I was like, okay, God, so sick of these people calling me and knocking on my door and everything. Jeez, I'll just do one. And that's when the door opened and then it was a flood. It's a floodgate. Yeah. yeah. You, you do and then I couldn't it's stop like, it. Yeah. 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 And then it was like one in Anderson Cooper. Then they did that thing. And they're like, well, you said this and that, and we don't really understand what that means. And I'm like, well, okay. I'll, okay. I'll do one more. And you start talking again and you're like, well, I, I I'm still, man. And then but you do a couple more. So what like I'm doing right now, and I want to be on here, I didn't want to talk about any of this stuff ever. And I hope I never have to, to the veteran community. I want to do this and I never do it again. I want to go on like Fox something and then never do it again. Because I just want to be able to try to apologize or fix or make up for the CNN stuff. So I went on CNN and the door flew open. And there's a lot of stuff that was put on there that they're using to this day. And the reason I say... Don't believe a word that CNN has on there with me because they'll take video clips and they'll yeah. splice them and they'll do stuff. <laughs> and so if you see something on CNN right now and it's not me right here talking to you, it's not probably not true yeah. because they can manipulate it. They can edit it. They can do this. They can do that. They can make me say almost anything they wanted to. Yeah. And so I'll tell you right now, if you're watching old videos from 13, 14, 15, 16, it doesn't matter if they take that and they edit it, do whatever they want. Don't believe it. Don't believe anything you see on here unless you're actually here listening to it and you don't see uncut the all the way through. And I'm, the I'm not thing. editing any of this. I, no, I but, won't edit but you it. see what I'm saying? Yeah. The manipulation right now <clears throat> in news and mainstream media is so bad that but to be fair, everything's I, a lie. To be I, fair, I will say, like knowing you <clears throat> at that time, I do think you were on a mission to push a certain agenda that you just that no longer suits you. I mean, when I was working on Andrew Wilkins, no, it's the I same agenda. Remember, but I just I remember when I was working on, on Andrew Wellcow, and if yeah. Andrew said something you didn't disagree, you didn't agree with, right? You would call into the show and you would be kind of furious about it. Like, 
at that time, you were not, uh, just from my perspective, you were not yeah. like, I just want to live my life and don't bother me. You were at the forefront as an activist, I would say. Yeah, because just like I said before, I haven't changed. If people are being bullied, people are being picked on, people are being killed just because they're trying to live their own private life. I have a problem with that. Sure. And so I still have a problem with transgender people being mistreated. The couple of them that are now, but for the most part, transgender people can do whatever they want and just walk or do whatever they want. You know, because well, so at the, many laws at the time things. you came out, it was way before this was, it was like way different. The big issue. Yeah. And and yeah. I do think you were and I and I've always felt this way. I do think you were being bullied. The fact that yeah. you were not able to go to funerals <clears throat> of guys that you served with yeah. because of what you were wearing or how you presented. Who gives a shit? You were there yeah. and you served. Yeah. And there's no reason you should not be allowed <clears throat> to go to a teammate's funeral. And I think you have no you have nothing to apologize for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I, bro. I, and I, I don't, I, chief, I don't see, I mean, you apologize. You know, and I get the news thing. I went through the same yeah. shit, dude. I don't, yep, that's, why yep. I, that's why I don't do the news anymore. I, I, yeah. I tell them, nope, no, no. Cause because yeah, I'd rather will, do this. And, well, this is, this is where yeah. we can be ourselves. And if we want to yep. say, Hey man, you don't like what I'm saying? Fuck you. I can say that. I, right? yeah. And yep. it's not going to be edited, but I, yeah. I, I feel you with the news because I, those three years. Yeah. I would go on and yeah, yeah. I'd go on Hannity and I'd go yep. on fucking now I, I go on O'Reilly's and and hey I, I I actually would go on Jake Tap Jake Tapper I thought was a decent guy till mm-hmm. he started to manipulate some of the shit yeah, yeah. And so that's why it's like no I, I'm not doing any more news and Ian knows this I've stopped doing it yeah. and because it does they'll take those sound bites and sometimes yeah. you get five minutes to say what you want and yeah you really don't because you got two minutes because the the, <laughs> the the interview is good so uh, yeah. I get you I, and that's saying when you went through that same thing that even you know, in different scenarios, yeah. different perspectives. But when I went on the news too, you're still getting mm-hmm. manipulated and pushed in a direction that yeah. they want you to, yeah. they're, they're putting you in those that right and left limits. This is where I want them to go. And they know how to push you that yeah. route. So, so if I could make, so if I could make one law, if I was a president and the king of the world, I would make one law and I would want it as the king of the world for everything. If you do news, you can have no music. Yeah. <laughs> Because the th- here's the thing is like, if you have a newscaster going, blah, 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 blah. And whatever he's saying, you can put suspense, well, gong, 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 <laughs> music behind it. And the guy's going, blah, 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 blah. And everybody's going, oh my God, I'm so afraid. And then, and then you can also have the guy going, blah, 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 blah. And behind you can have dee, 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 good music. Everybody goes, oh my God, this makes me so happy. But the guy said the same thing. And so they manipulate because there's music back there and they do it with colorations and everything else. And so it's, why can't we just have news people? And this was somebody else's idea. And I was like, this is brilliant because the news really sets you up with their music. So before the guy even starts talking, you hear in the background going, grr, 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 grr. and then the guy goes and presenting breaking news. Eh? And you're like, you already made everybody go, something bad is going to happen. <laughs> and then the guy says, breaking news. There's a, Free ice cream down at the 7 Eleven. I'm not good. This must be poison. That's right. It's probably Republican ice cream. Republican. Know. You know, because uh, they hate the Republicans so much. Every time they talk about GOP, uh, it's like, yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I do the news. I mean, yeah, so too. outlaw the king of the world would outlaw all music on the news <laughs> really and then just give perfect. us the stuff. Just talk. You don't need to sell us anything. Just give us the facts. No. But the, the problem is, and I've said it on the show many times, is that this is what we choose to consume, because if it didn't sell and people didn't click on it, it's not how they would be doing it. Yeah. And so that's so what we say it a million times. Turn that shit off. I've said, turn yeah. it off. I, I, had a, I did a yeah. speaking event and somebody asked me, it was a Q&A at the end and like, how can we get things back to where people don't hate each other? And I said, yeah. I said, stop watching the news. And the whole, the whole, the whole, everybody hushed. Like, that's all it's going to take. Because they, they wanted me to expound on it. I'm like, no, I was like, that's it. That's what you do. And the people still could not. Fi- it's like fucking cocaine. They cannot turn that shit off. And it's like, but to be fair, I mean, it's like we still do have great journalists and especially like veteran yeah. journalists out there. People we've had on the show like Holly McKay and, you know, and Luke Ryan and they do great work. So, like, I do think it's important to be informed. I just think and um, I've heard other people say, it too, we should be reading more of our news than watching news. And yeah. I, I definitely follow yeah. that myself. I read AP articles. I read, you know, what the stuff that we read top of show is important. Chris, if you took your one idea right there, turn it off. And in my idea about politics, about the parties, my idea was everybody, every single citizen in America needs to be registered as an independent or not registered at all. And then what that would do, 
would be kind of like, hush, silence should be for that one too. But people don't get it. <laughs> if, if every American citizen was independent, there would be no political parties. No parties. There would be political action committees, which is what they really are. Yeah. So then the political action committee wouldn't be able to say, well, my base is 240 million people. And so they can do whatever the heck they want. They can go super extreme because they count on 240 million people. Yeah. 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 And the yeah. other party goes, well, my base is 241 million people. So fuck you. And yeah. It's like, seriously? And I said, well, you guys it, discount all the American citizens because you think you own us. Yeah. And I said, yeah. So if another... we're all independent and we turn off all these news channels, America would straighten out really fast yeah, well, it, it was takes. another it was another Two navy things. seal who had a very similar idea to you as i remember when jesse ventura was on larry I king like jesse yeah and what jesse said was yeah. we shouldn't have political parties at all yep. and people should just run on ideas he's like that would change everything yeah i don't it really i think would. it's i'll be honest i think it's wishful thinking i think there's mm -hmm. way too much money to be, be, be yeah, made in politics i'll always be a registered republican not because i have any loyalty to that party but just because living in New York right now or living mm -hmm. in any state with a, with a closed primary, yep. I would be losing my right to vote in a primary by not registering with a party yep. because of the way that it's set up. Do you see what happens when we all become independent? They wouldn't be able to have the closed primaries. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to have all the stuff they do. Citizens United, that's a huge problem. So that would also be overturned. Citizens United allows corporations to be seen as individuals to donate money to politicians. And we spoke, this, we spoke about this. We spoke about this last episode. Box. We spoke about this That's last episode. Box. The the problem with citizens you know uh, united being overturned, though, would be that there's still union money in politics, and that was like when I worked on Wilkes. The Cal, unions we forget that. them too. <clears throat> yeah, that would all of have to change with that Supreme Court decision, though. Yeah, they would have to get rid of all that. If you're an individual, <laughs> you can give your ten bucks, twenty bucks, whatever. If you have a social yeah. security number, not a yeah. EIN, a SSM. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I know we're getting long, but I, I wanted to uh, hit hit the before we left. Um, I saw, I, you know, I, and I, 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 you, your post, you're doing a great job on, on your, so, and as much as social media that I don't get on, I get on every once, but I, you know, I follow you on your stuff. You, you mentioned God a lot more. You, you have yes. at least, and yep. I, I get it. Can you, before we get you go expound on that a little bit? Cause that's, as you see mine, I'm, very, I'm the worst Christian in the fucking world. I am. I'm terrible. But I am, and I do believe in, in God, and, and I didn't always. I've, I've come to that over. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, you're fine. You found it. What's the importance of that? Yeah. And and having you where you're at your point in life right now has it helped you? Yeah. I'm thinking that it has, but if it hasn't, yeah. you don't tell it. But I, I like it. At this point in your life, I love, I love seeing that. I love seeing those posts, dude. I, I really do. It means a lot to, just to me, and it gets me. Like, okay, I know I'm going the right way. Right. It helps me. Like, I, this is where we need to be. So can you yeah. talk about God a little well, bit? On it's, it's like one of those things where <clears throat> you kind of have that eye-opening event or you have yeah. something where you, it just all clicks. Yeah. Or when you're like looking at the whole world, you know, and how complicated it is and how complex we are as even as human beings, yeah. you know, the most magical thing ever created is like a human being. Yeah. The fact that we can uh, in house a soul that weighs 21 grams, by the way, the, the fact that we can house something and do this and have consciousness and do everything we've done. How amazing is that? Yeah. Well, how did that happen? And so if you think that all of this happened because the frog turned into this and turned into that, turned into that, and then suddenly out of this goo, here's a human, you know? <laughs> and I studied philosophy in college too. And then when you start going into like first cause and causal theory and even on the atheists and everybody, when they start doing the big bang, they can go back as far as they want and say, well, what started that? You know? And they're like, well, then they stop You know, they can keep trying to explain it. But even if you go into physics far enough, physics comes up with stuff. Well, we don't know. It's, yeah. it's something happened. Yeah. So then what happened? The, well, it's magic. Okay, well, I just prefer to call that God, you know, yeah. it just makes it easier because it's a word I can apply to it. And that means it's everything. And so when you think about us as human beings, and you look at the, at the cellular level, you know, mitochondria, the nuclei, yep. and you start yep. doing all the stuff, there's a lot of gaps and there's a lot of space. And if you look at even to go even further down into the atoms and all that, you have the electrons flying around all that. There's a lot of space. And what's in that space? You know, it's God. 
when I so you think about even I was, I was going in like the speed of light and then I says well what what's faster than speed of light well speed of thought is faster um you have the um particles that do the um the principle where they do the entanglements you know strange entanglements and all that that's way faster than speed of light but then you ask the physics like the really hard question how big is a visible universe and they give you a, the how big it is you go how big is the universe and they go well it's this big and i said well so if it started with the big bang and you have a visible universe which is where light goes but then you have the whole universe is 11 times bigger huh so that means something's going 11 times faster than the speed of light isn't that interesting <laughs> And it's, that's it's, something that uh, Lee Scallon um, built a cool castle down there. He discovered that he discovered what it was. There's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of technology and things that I can tie into God because it's so magical because it's so amazing, you know. And there's no way this stuff just happened by magic. It's yeah. too it's too much. And I so agree. that's me <clears throat> being a weird seal techie that I am. <laughs> I see it all through that technology. I see the pyramids as these giant. Um, piezoelectric uh, crystalline um, pressure points creating energy down to a focus apex that puts it out the top of it onto that gold pyramid cap, the apex, which shoots it up into the stratosphere. It hits the sky ice and the sky ice disperses it, which is way up in the upper stratospheres. Some people are going to get this. When it disperses, then it goes around the whole world. What Tesla was trying to do was he couldn't create the pressure that the pyramids are able to exert. So what he did, he's, he went up to the height yeah. and then he pumped a bunch of power up into there to cause the same effect, you know? And this is, I can do this. It's, it's, it's a physics. It's not very hard. So when it gets up there, it dissipates. And then we were able to have these devices, handheld devices that could actually collect this power and then use it to do things, you know? And this was all going on three, 4,000 years ago. And so that's when a lot of this stuff started happening, when people started saying, that these folks had these things that were doing these amazing things, unexplainable by science at the time, it's magic, you know? And so if we have stuff going on right now in this world that we cannot explain through physics, we can't explain it through chemistry, we can't explain it at all. This is a weird, it's weird science is so far out. We just call it magic. And then sometimes we also start calling that God. Mm -hmm. And so that locks in all the energies and things. Then when you start reading the Bible and you start seeing a lot of the science and a lot of stuff I'm talking yeah, about yeah. is in the Bible. And so then you got to start wondering, well, how is that? That there is no microscope. There's no way they could have seen that. There's no way for them to measure this. But the fact that you have like cotton and wool, and they said in Leviticus that you're not supposed to wear these mixed fibers. Well, the fact is, is if you can measure it, the, my shirt that I'm wearing right now with the fabrics and things, it gives off a vibrational frequency. Actually, there was one of the OG. Well, I can't talk about that. <laughs> I was going to say something that I invented. One of my inventions that might still be classified. I can't. Oh, shit. But, yeah, 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 you yeah, yeah. So you all so of this stuff, the fabric, it lines up differently. So the, the, the way the vibrations go, it's an off vibration. So wool cancels out uh, flax and cotton, I think. And it causes some negative. So if you're wearing all these different fibers, it's going to give you a negative energetic effect on your body as you're wearing it, which makes you get depression, which makes you get anxiety, which makes it come to all off center. I didn't, I didn't then, know that. No, so I, it's I, all, I, it's I, chakras, the Hindu, the chakra. Buddhism, the Shock, all chakra. the different things. I can also show you where all these go together and where there's, there's so much we could talk about when you start talking about God. Yeah, there's also, then I start talking about Jesus and I start talking about the Bible and I start seeing the Bible for what it truly is. It's a historical document that was written and we can look at history that was written about Benghazi. And we have a lot of different accounts, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so how do you put all that together? <clears throat> so you do the best you can and here it is and here, here's what we got. So you have to read it with that. There's a different accounts because people saw it from different points of view, but it's truth. There's a, so much truth in there. Sure. Yeah. So when I see Jesus and I see so many scriptures that say what's happening and where we are living right now, I see that we are in a time right now, Satan, we are in a time right now where there's a great awakening happening. We are living right now in the end days. I mean, it's like, I can show you a lot of stuff. The, the energetics and all that stuff is making this really big, powerful evil coming up. The Blensky and all that sits the tip of the iceberg. As that's lifting up, 
people have to do it the other side for the balance, the yin yeah. and yang of it. Yeah. So as they get more evil, you're going to start finding some really good people starting to do things. Craig Sawyer is one of the great examples you brought him up earlier. And a lot of other good folks who are really fighting this because they're that bright light trying to offset this great evil, you know? And so Jesus is walking the earth right now. He always has been because it's all part of the same physics. It's all still part of the same. Um, it goes all the way from cellular to universal level and a bunch of other stuff that I can't really say. It, it would take too long to explain it yeah. all. But if you're not reading the old histories, you're not reading the books like the Bible yeah. and the Kabbalah, and you can read a lot about the Gnostics and some of those guys, or Hermetics, and you have to see where they all start intertwining. And I mean, geez, Hermes alone, you can want him forever. Wow. But, wow. but due to Hermetics, due to Gnostics, look at the Bible, look at what Jesus did. What did he say? You know, what was he doing? There's a reason for it all. Yeah. And the reason why right now all that really great evil is so easy for them to show on TV is because we're getting ready to have the big battle. So they're showing themselves. And so I'm doing a lot of these videos also to make sure that I'm showing myself. I'm witnessing the fact that I did get pulled way into that really bad stuff. And I'm not saying that gay or transgender or anything that's bad. There's a lot of amazing, really good people. But I think a lot of people are being used, you know, for yeah. a different agendas. And I want to ensure because they thought they had me, you know, and they don't. You know, Jesus is here right now. Jesus is a savior. And there's a lot of good people out there, yeah. the beacons of light who have read enough of this stuff and understand what's going on. And all you have to do is just to listen to a little bit of it, read a little bit of it. And I can do Bible verses and all that. And I could do verses out of the Gnostics and Hermetics also, but it's, you got to read it yourself and experience it yourself. But yeah. the only there, way you can do that is with an open mind. Yeah, the, there's a lot sense. to unpack there. The, the two things I wanted to mention though, because I was going to jump in there. Uh, you were talking about the clothing thing. Yeah, it's, it's wild because I've read a lot about how it's like everything <laughs> we're wearing now is plastic. There's plastic mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and just for the environment alone, how terrible it is. But the, uh, the other thing I was going to ask you as you were talking about like stuff in scripture and how it pertains to real life. Have you been to Israel? No, I haven't. Oh, well, not on my passport. <laughs> okay. No, because I'm just going to say, I, I haven't, I was there once back in 05. That's a long time. But I mean, the wild thing is how, like, if you are someone who's very biblical, is how there's so much stuff written thousands mm -hmm. of years ago that you could go to Israel and it's described mm -hmm. exactly how it's described yeah. in the Bible. It's so yeah. wild. What do you think about the Garden of Eden actually being at the North Pole right now? That's why they won't let people go there. See, this is uh, where you get very conspiracy. <laughs> I, I know. Don't do don't do conspiracy theory. What you need to do is you need to look at the plates. You need to look at Pangea. You need to look at all the other stuff. Look at the physics of it. Look at what's going on. You need to do look Alex at, Jones. I have to say, you do. No, you you but, would be great on. That. But but the thing is, is like a lot of the stuff I bring up, unless I test it and I see it, I don't believe it. But I do want to question it. And oh, the fact sure. is, Absolutely. is if I just ask a question. And I bring that up to you and I say, yeah, the Garden of Eden's at the North Pole. And there are four rivers that flow out of the North Pole and go out just like they were explained in the Bible. You can go through the Bible and look verse by verse how they, how they describe the Garden of Eden. And there's a lot of things that really match up. But you have to look at the maps of, of the world of the North Pole. And I think it was before 1300 or 1400. So you have to look at the older maps. Otherwise, you won't see it because now it's all covered up by ice which doesn't yeah. really exist. That, see, see, that's, but that's, it's, it, whether you say it or not, agree or not, people need to research and look at it. But, but just look I into it. And, it. and why, why are we not allowed to go to the North Pole? You know, we're advanced civilization. I have enough equipment and I have enough training. I can go to the North Pole and make it now. I couldn't have, you know, 50 years ago, we didn't have the equipment. We didn't have the stuff. And you look at Antarctica also, you know, how come we can't go to Antarctica? You know, and I understand that as far as world powers go, that if Antarctica has amazing resources and then look what happened to America when America was supposedly discovered and in Europe went, yeah, and they started killing everybody and getting all the gold. And then we're left here as the leftovers of Europe. And then we're called the bad guys. It's like, dude, that was all going on in 1300 to 1700 when they were raping America for everything and killing everybody because the Europeans were greedy. And it, we're just the leftovers. And now you're telling me I'm a bad guy. Come on. You know, I would look at all that and say that would happen in Antarctica if Antarctica was just free wide open. 
So I understand there has to be some constraints to stop World War III because everybody would want the resources, but don't stop the explorers. It's like, if I'm going down there to explore, I'm not going down there as a government agency. We have the one party set up and we want to go down there. I don't want to look at the pyramid that's down there because the pyramid in our Antarctica still has the gold cap, you know? And I want to see it. I want to see how thick the gold was. I want to see the dimensions. I want to see there's some things I want to measure on it. See, see I, I, I wanted to. Good. I wanted to Google well, this well, just to make sure I, I was want, accurate. Well, I, don't I was want, gonna say, do you know? Want, you know, Metallica did a concert in Antarctica, but they only go to like the base America. They go to the bases or in certain <laughs> spots. It's, it's still pretty. If you wild, go to Antarctica, though. you're isolated to a certain place that you're allowed to go. So yeah, you can't go no, in the interior. Chief and Chief, you need to go because I don't like the fucking cold. So you go down there and film it for me. You said to me, <laughs> "I will." That's, that's I your, want to. I, I'd love I, to see. I, I, I think there. I still think there's a lot of things out there that we haven't seen and we yep. don't know. Right? But you're right. The, the the Bible. It's it's surprising at the Bible being so old that you can read it and you can still. It's, it's still true. It still makes sense. And, the and, flood was true. It's true. It, exactly. Hey, what about all the Olmec heads in South America? Oh, Explain to God. me the Olmec heads. They're as big as a house, and they're clearly African oh, descent. Exactly. You know, the Moors. Does anybody even talk about the Moors anymore? Yeah. The Great Zimbabwe and Africa. And there was, there was God, we're idiots, it's just, you know? It's just and we the, think that we're all like this European whatever. It's like, then they're all mech heads. And you go in there, and I, I could go on with this stuff forever, but there's so much stuff that's undiscovered, and they keep secret from us. They don't want anybody to know about the stuff about Africans here in the Americas going back to what 3000 years ago years, yeah. because it would ruin the narrative and then you go all this european centric and all this stuff it's like no come on man uh, we're, it goes way, says, we're lo- way 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 back farther than that and way and, back and that's where but that's that's what's that's what's really still chris so how cool how old do you think the world is how old is how old is the human fuck race? dude i have no idea i, I think six thousand two hundred and something years you if you say so i'm gonna say because i know if you I go think, through Go through the Bible and go line by line for each when they all were living, add them all the way through. I would say, yeah, I'd say 6,000 years, if that. 6,000, yes. But but that's that's if you're being a Bible literalist. But that's that's also, it could be way the fuck off. It could be 12,000. I would say it's it's, it's way off. I'd say it's way, way off. But, but I'm not a Bible literalist. But is how? But yeah. how can you? But how do you learn all that stuff if you're not allowed to explore and, and research that? That's and all that's, I'm saying is that if we talk about some of this stuff and we do it even on social media or mainstream media or the government, you said it yourself. It was like conspiracy. It was like as soon as I started asking questions and started looking at Great Zimbabwe, the Moors, and the Moorish mm-hmm. Kingdom coming here in America, how many thousands of years ago? And there's a proof. As soon as I start digging in that a little bit. People start freaking out and they start calling me conspiracy. I'm like, no, I'm just saying, explain those. Well, it's also because I, I know you well enough and I know how your mind is. And it's like, we could go from this and then you'll start talking about Ruby Ridge and Waco, Texas and like Project Blue Book. And I know that you you like conspiracy theories. That's that's part of you. That's part of who you are. Yeah. I've, I want to find too. nuggets of I truth. I do too. I don't, I don't ever, yeah. I'll say this. I do too. And Chris knows I do too. But I will say when I do the podcast, I generally don't like to like just personally put anything out there unless I'm sure of something or unless there's a great deal of evidence. And I feel like if I'm speculating or Chris is speculating, I like to at least say I'm speculating. Speculation is good. If you guys have been on my Instagram page. Oh yeah. Lately. And, and something, Hey, something. You see that weird picture right there. (laughs) I saw that you posted these. Yeah, Yeah. Okay. So then you look at these, the old paintings. Of these people without faces these people, and their faces on their bodies. Yeah. Their, their faces. And this is, that one is an Ottoman Empire map from the 1300s, I think. And that was drawn by one of the kings in the Ottoman Empire. So it was, it's wild. And you look at the history books and they explain these people, I like describe them right to a T. And you look at that actual mummified person and you look at where the shoulders are. If, if I was mummified, the way the shoulders were attached and everything, my shoulders would drop about, yeah. you know, they would drop if I was put mummified, straight, standing straight up and down. That guy, that mummy right there is one of those people. It's an actual evidence of those types of people existing here on Earth. It's physical evidence. Take the DNA of it. I want to take pictures of it. I want to dissect some of it and study the bones. I want to look at it. I want to carbon date it and do a bunch of stuff to that mummy. They won't let me. 
<laughs> because they say it's all fake. It's just somebody made an artistic this and that. Sure. I says, well, I want to ask the questions. I see these pictures of these people. Then I see a mummy of one of those people. Why can't we ask the questions and look at it and like study a little bit? I will. I do. I have. I have something. I'm you know curious what I mean? About. For sure. I have something I'm curious about because, as I said, you are someone who loves researching everything when it comes to like war history, history of space exploration, all this stuff that we've gotten into. Like, how many books do you read a year? Because I, I, you have to be an avid reader. No, not very much anymore. When, really? when I, my TVI kind of made it really hard for me to read. And, but you uh, know what else actually... has made it hard for us to read, though, is also just like social media, how everything is like oh, probably that social and media everything too, is it's easy. It's people like yeah. my reading yeah. is not what it was when I was younger. And I realize it's because we're more easily distracted. And I do think all that's by design. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. But I've been going to a whole bunch of old bookstores, the antique bookstores, and I've been getting books from the 1800s that's and I've awesome. like building up my library and get rid of any book that's after like 1850. I don't even want it because that's when <laughs> something happened that I'd have to go into really depth. But <laughs> the um, I just think there's too much stuff out there that's being covered up that we have a little bit of evidential. We have evidence that this exists. And then the government says, no, it doesn't. And then they cover it up. He goes, like, yeah, but I saw that. It's really For weird. Sure. And I was in the I mean, military long enough. I've spoken about it with you, I believe. I, I know I mentioned last episode, like Bob, Bob Lazar, the stuff Bob Lazar uncovered about, you know, uh, UFOs and, and Area 51. Why can't we just there's, ask questions? Yeah, there's so much out there to look into. I, I Why have can't one... we ask a question about the stupid vaccines? Yeah. If we just question it, they say we're bad. And then we get like in trouble. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but it's it's like, we can ask questions, can't we? I'm putting yeah, in a foreign substance into my body that supposedly helps me. I want to ask some questions. Yeah, no. I, I have I have one last thing I want to ask you, unless Chris has anything else, but like genuine question and, and very vague here. But I ask it because the entire time I've known you, as I said, I feel like you've always been fighting for something. And at one point it was fighting for transgender rights. And at one point it was that you were running for Congress. And I think right now, like you're fighting to to fight against the narrative that you were putting out there years ago. And I'm just wondering, like at this point, and I, I wonder, as someone who considers myself a friend of yours, like, are you happy right now? Are you happy with where you're at? Are you able to just, like, enjoy life? Because I do think you're still kind of frantic about a lot of this stuff. And you want to wake people up. And I do get that. But I also think you deserve to have your own happiness after years of combat, after years of putting yourself through a lot of trauma induced by therapists, as you said. Um, I'm just yep. wondering, are you, are you enjoying life at this point? Oh, Yeah. When I'm Good. unplugged and I have also on my Instagram, I got this one big black side that says unplugged because it truly is a matter of unplugging. And once you unplug, you're good. You know, once you turn the TV off, once you unplug from all the social media. And if you notice the stuff I do on social media right now, it's like 10 minutes a day. I see a couple of things. I share some of my story and I go done. I don't let it get on me. So I see social media now as like the pig pen. And like, you can go in, you can look at the pig pen from a little ways away and go, yeah, it's pig pen. Yep. Okay. I think I've seen enough and walk away. <laughs> walk away. But yeah. if you get inside the pig pen, you're going to get muddy. You're going to get pig shit all over you. For sure. You know? And so what I've learned by that happened right when I did the unplugged post, which is probably like a month ago, was I totally unplugged. I don't let, I don't go into pig pen. I don't look, I look at it and I see, yep, still a pig pen. Sure wish it would clean up and I walk away. <laughs> You know, That's and a smart the way. only thing I'm doing this right now for is, like I said, I want to make sure that, and this is also in the Bible that we have to do this. We have to witness the fact that this is who I am. This is what I stand for. And then we have to unplug. It actually says in there that we're not supposed to congregate in these huge churches and do these things. That's like the devil, you know, individually to know Jesus, individually to walk in Jesus's path, even in your own family, family member doesn't do that. It's like, all right, yeah, it's cool. You know, I'll try to let you know what's going on, but I can't do that for you. You can't you force them. You, no, you, you can't force somebody. And when you somebody Man. tries to force somebody to find God or find Christian, yeah. that's 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 actually what pushed me away initially. And what yep. brought me back is finally they said, we gave you some guidance. You got to find it yourself. We need to set the example. And that's yes. all. And, and that, so that's honestly, all I'm trying to do. Like I said, I'm going on a few shows and then I'm done. And if you call me again after this one, I'll probably say no. Unless it's me and you just sitting around having beers. I don't drink anymore though. But it's it's just I don't want to do this ever again. You know? Yeah. And so I'm gonna do a couple of ones, maybe big, one Fox or whatever, because it's Fox, you know. 
If well, CNN has me on, I'll do one CNN thing and then I'll do it never again. I'll be like, nah, no, nope, never. And, that, and that's that's the smart way to do it. I, I've yeah. unplugged, I unplugged, I, I nuked my yeah. accounts a long time ago and I brought them back yeah. on. But I'm saying I, I'll post something that'll be off for four or five days. I'll post something. What about the just, sorry, about the transgender rights? I'm still fighting for rights of people. Yeah. I still don't want to see transgender people being abused, being hurt. And that comes from the doctors as well as just people on the street. So I do see the medical industry right now is doing damage to the transgender community. There's people out there doing things to these young kids. And that's all I'm talking about. If you're 21, 25, 30, and you want to go get surgeries and do whatever, get as many tattoos as you want. You can cut your nose off and become a reptile. You know, Which you're, people are doing, yeah. People do that. And it's like, if you want to do that stuff and you're 25 years old, I don't care. But if you're a 13 year old kid, you know, yeah. and your mom has blue hair and she really wants you to be gay because she's not. And then it turns out she can make you trans and see this happening. It's like there's there's people that it's like Munchausen by proxy. It's like a medical thing. It's a psychological thing. But there's there's people out there that are doing things that are not medical. It's not psychological. It's not anything. They're using people. And I don't know why they're doing that. Now, if you have a 13 year old who says they're transgender and they want to have the double mastectomy and do all the stuff as his little girl who's getting picked on at school because she's not the popular girl having to live up to this Kardashian crap, you know, no girl can live up to that. So don't you think that depresses every young girl? Yeah. Don't you think that makes every young girl not feel like she could ever be that? So she's like, well, look at those boys who are out there playing sports, having a great time. They don't have to worry about that. So you have these little girls that are being hurt. You have these little boys also being hurt. And so all I'm saying is, if, if it didn't have anything to do with these little kids, these teenage kids, they're taking Lupron, which is a, um, a castration drug that used to get the pedophiles in prison. Yeah. That's what they're giving them. Yeah. And, that's and so true, it's give, yeah. being given to teenagers, teenage kids, that's ridiculous. It is. So if all that stopped, I wouldn't be on here. I wouldn't have even cared. I would have been like, hey, I, yeah, I'm an idiot. I did that and that. And I shouldn't have. I had gender dysphoria. I'm not transgender. I had anxiety. I'm not transgender. I had depression. I had opioid addiction. I had, I had a lot of stuff going on. But I'm not transgender. What happened was a whole ball of wax got pushed all together and then stuck a transgender label on it. And then that's what happened. But that's making me a victim, which I'm not. I was a huge part of it. I'm the one that got addicted to the opioids. I'm the one that got addicted to stuff. I'm the one that did a lot of stuff. I take responsibility for that. Those doctors out there, those psychologists are not even doing that. They will not take responsibility for their actions. They think they can go around and do all this stuff and think there's going to be no consequences. Yeah. If the consequences aren't right now on this earth, it's going to be because karma is going to, karma is a real thing too. It's about to balance the universe. That's in the Bible. Yeah. You know, it's not, we're not called karma, but yeah, yeah, it's Bob. These doctors right now, if they weren't messing with these kids, I would not be talking. If it didn't happen with the CNN stuff and I got stuck into the stupid media stuff, I never, you wouldn't ever see into me. I probably would have run for Congress because I was political science when I was in college and all that. And I just, I know it sounds like I did a lot of degrees, but I had some minors. So, <laughs> but I, uh, I'm political because I see politics as a way for us to fix this. I had a plan to balance a budget in 17 years and it would have worked. It had to do with a lot. There's taxation, a bunch of other stuff. It would have gotten rid of the entire IRS if they'd used my financial plan to recover America, would have paid off the debt, national debt. Yeah. Can't do it now. It'd probably take 40 or 50 years now, oh, even yeah. with my old plan. But there's, there's a lot of stuff I would love to do and I want to help because I love this country. I love our constitution because it really is a, a bedrock of a really good society. The problem yeah. is, is we have people in power right now that are doing things that are not constitutional that are not allowed to do. Why can you have an executive order that deals with anything that has to do with money? Yeah. That's Congress. Congress runs the strings of the budget, not executive orders. If it has anything to do with money, it's executive orders. It's like, no, it's unconstitutional. It's not We're your not business, following. dude. You know, there's all kinds of stuff I can talk about, but it's very political. And I want to do that, but politics is, is the pig pen. And I would never do that again because it's so bad. It's it so sucks. corrupt. It sucks you in and it turns yeah, you up. It's and corrupt it makes, to the it, core. Yeah, it is. It, I mean, look at freaking Bush when he ran against John Kerry. 
You know, <clears throat> yeah. they were both skull and bones. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna yeah. say that. You know, you the skull that and bones Bill, motto. What's the skull and bones motto? Like his, I remember the skull and bones motto is like power and power death. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and, they, that's what and those I, guys I, were brothers yeah. in the same skull and bones power yeah. and death fraternity. Yeah. You don't Did you ever hear Bill, Bill Burr had a joke about that? He was like, if there was ever an election where they wanted to show you that this is the most corrupt thing ever, he was like, it was that election. Yeah. Like two guys look at who Bush were Senior. skull and bones together, look at both went President, to Yale. <laughs> President Bush Sr. being really good friends with Barack Obama's father and they do businesses together, <laughs> giant businesses. And then you have pictures of Barack Obama as a kid sitting on George Bush's knee. That just it, it, isn't that just, weird and people don't they just don't it, it they just they're I, all in they, the same they, club it's like right here man they just don't read do smedley it. butler heck, heck just let's go play golf all those good golfing pictures where they're all buddies hanging out going to hit going hit the hit the nine holes man they're all in the same club it is or just, i mean let's be honest like the the array of photos of both bill clinton and donald trump with yeah, jeffrey epstein <laughs> and julian maxwell it's they're ridiculous. all in the same club well, it's not I, my club. I'm no. on the other side. It's that's why I'm doing this clubs. also. That's, that's I'm that witnessing that I bit. want you to know. All you people in that club, I want you to know. I'm not in your club, mm. and I will fight that club. Because I'm Christian. I'm a real Christian. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the true word of God. I don't believe in your, you know, Joaquin Boaz pillars of Satan and Lucifer. And all you people in that club know what I'm talking about. Right. You know and, I'm right. And, and you found it and you found it on your own. And that's how you find it. You find yeah, you it, have to, but you, you have, have to do your own path. And chief, honestly, I, I just love having you on talk about war stories, dude. I just love like talking about fucking. You didn't really. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm I know, we got it. Dang, some of it. Yeah, dang, I want to get into when you kick that door in and you fucking muzzle thump that fucker in the face. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, but, but uh, dude, I, I admire you. Yeah, I really do. And I'm glad you came on. And I really feel bad. I didn't have you also like Ian. I, he may not want to come on or chief may not want to come on, but. I got to be on with at least one fucking time. So, if we could do no politics and none of this stuff about gender and just crap. Yeah, you, you, you well, would, I need that. We'll do another. You know, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, well, it just, I, I, I just, I, 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 uh, I want to say, you know, at anything, thank you for at least. Thank you. Cause, cause I, I do know how it feels to come on. And then after this podcast where you just, you're like, fuck, I'm spent. I am. I'm at yeah. the end of it. So I, I appreciate it, man. It so I told Laura to Ingram and an Ingram angle that I'd be on her show, but I just missed it for you guys. So I no missed Laura Ingram. Yeah, well, don't, don't miss it. You gotta. You, you gotta no, I don't want to. I didn't want to. I don't want to go on the shows. I really don't. I'd rather do this. Hey, can I do I, one story? I can I do I, one more story? That's yeah, yeah, go, go for it. That's that's what so, I'm I'd rather do this and go on Fox. You know. Hey, hey, so I, I told Tucker Carlson I wasn't gonna go on the show. I was like, they don't like me at Fox now. I was like, fuck, I don't want to go on your damn show. I'm done with you. Yeah. I, well, yeah. watch. So watch his show for the next few days. <laughs> oh, you're, yeah. are you going to be on because of the Robbie Starbucks stuff? No, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, it'd all be right. interesting. If you go on, I will fucking suck it up and I'll watch it. All right, just for yeah, you. and just like I said earlier, I'm going to go on Fox and a couple of them just to try to offset my CNN crap from 2013. You, you do what you feel like you need to do, and I'll I feel say like just, it has to be for me to clean my slate, to clean my to karmic. That's like for karma do. reasons, I have to get the offset balance. For I, the, I understand. So I, completely I don't want understand. to, but I will, you know, because I have to. We got to bring so the story, in. war story. Yeah, come on, come on. So, you know how we always do lessons learned? And I can't remember who it was. We got shot a bunch of times, but it was basically when you're in Afghanistan and you're walking across those rooftops and we're sneaking, you know, and you're going across the rooftop. You know, if you don't stay on the walls, and you go towards the middle, you're going to fall through, fall through yeah. you know, and oh, it's RPG too. It's a funny story, but the, um, so who was the guy who was walking on a rooftop and he fell through and he landed inside the um, barracks room of a Taliban compound. And it was a bunch of Taliban woke up as he fell through and he had to fight him and he had to pull his pistol and he started knife fighting. What that happened. I can't, they're going to call and say, it was me, but it was a story that we used to tell each other. It was like a lesson. It was like the lesson was the roofs are made of like basically cow dung in these patties and they're put on top of wood way out in the sticks, you know? And they're so made, yeah, not, not wood. They're made, trees. They're, they're put on fucking tree trees and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then they put the cow dung on and they put wet mud on top of that yeah. to make it yeah. sealed up. And then sometimes there's some plastic, but, it's but it's poor, really flimsy. It's poor man stucco. It's what it is. Poor, it's yeah. fucking Afghan poor man stucco. stucco. Yeah, and right. the cow dung actually works really good because it, but, 
the um so we learned walk along the edges where the walls are because then you have something below you and then stay to the edges don't go into the middle so we went in the middle we fell through turned into a big firefight with him against a barracks full of taliban shooting and knives and just was going nuts and he ended up winning the fight and so that's a lesson that we always tell each other about don't walk in the middle if you do get ready to fight because you're going to fall on a barracks and you have to you get your knife ready so so here i am walking along the roof and i fall through and i'm like ah and broken rib and i'm sitting there and so i start getting ready to fight and all it was was this cow look at me and went <laughs> you know so that would be like the drago story did Drago ever tell you about when he hit the mule no, I could tell he's, you a mule he's, punching story. He's a maniac, that guy. Oh man, he's, the he's best crazy. story ever. Okay, yeah. You, you I was at, we were on this mission. We're running around. We're chasing these dudes, and we're in this vehicle that I told them to pull the doors off of. It was pretty funny. I think they got in trouble for that. But <laughs> so we're driving through here, and he was this guy with his donkey cart. It was a donkey or a mule, and it was stuck, and we had to get through there to go there. These guys are going that way. We got to go. And so we're trying to get the donkey out of there. And you know, if you start pulling a donkey, it doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And so here Drago walks up, he goes like this, and he goes, whoom, and he hits the donkey, knocks it out. And it, it was like Arnold Schwarzenegger on Conan. That's like fucking Blazing Saddles, man. It was, a, it was a funny thing. It was what called Donkey Puncher. It was a <laughs> mule puncher or something, mule kicker. I, I'm, I'm lucky. Funny. I'm lucky uh, that Drago likes me, I think, because I mean, he's out of his mind. Like, I he's awesome. Yeah, he's but the best he, guy ever. He is a guy, though. Yeah. Like, when Chris says the switch is on and, and you're like, I turn it off when I'm back home, I feel like Drago is a guy where the switch is never off. Like, I, I heard about this story from when I was at Soft Rep. I wasn't there, but I do believe Drago punched a photographer that we worked with who was just a regular kid, not a <laughs> special operations veteran because he was jealous that some girl was hitting on him at some party. But the, this Drago, Polish Grom Drago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Polish yeah. Grom Drago. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the guy who was Funny, in a dude, communist dude. gulag and, yeah. and he said before that he watched the movie Navy Seals with Charlie Sheen and it inspired <laughs> him to become a SEAL. But yeah, he super nice guy to me, but yep. seems a little fucking crazy. More so than your average seal. Too. <laughs> oh, so man, to finish that story it. off, th- I, there was no cow in there. I only fell through and broke her ribs. It wasn't that bad. I made up the well, cow they, part. But, and, and, but, the, <laughs> but, but don't walk in the middle of the ribs. It's a lesson. And then when you shoot an RPG at a vehicle born, I, it was a vehicle born. V-Bid was, was right there. How fucking so I got close the were new you? Guy. How close were you to it? When you, you shot it with an RPG, how close were you to it? Yeah. Uh, it were on a rooftop. It was pretty far. Okay, right, I was like, I it was wasn't like, bad. I was like, man, it sounded so, like you you shot or it was right in front of your face. Like, what the fuck are well, you doing? Well, it was standing like on the edge of the roof. <laughs> okay, and okay, then okay, okay. Boom. Okay. It's, but it's the same thing. The whole roof goes boom. It Dude. like dips. And sometimes if you shoot an RPG, you just, when they big explosives on those yeah. rooftops, it caves them in just from the impact. So it was like the lesson was don't ever shoot an RPG on a roof in Afghanistan. <laughs> you know, it'll cave hard. in. <laughs> You gotta test well, it a little uh, bit. Dude, I, I, uh, I have to throw it's out all the stupid stories. We can probably keep going on. Dude, oh, those, sure. those stories, those stories are, and it just it reminds <laughs> me. I mean, I, whenever I just felt when you did that, I just felt the overpressure when you did. It. I was like, oh my god, just, <laughs> it god, wasn't that, that bad. Brings, brings back. Brings I knocked back myself out shooting RPGs one time. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were shooting the RPGs, and you know when you shoot a bunch of them in the car, it gets right there by your head. Yeah, yeah. It goes thump, and it kind of knocks you out a little bit. You're like, oh. That's a terrible weapon. You shoot three of them, you start like really knocking you out. When you shoot like 15 of them and your vision starts going and you go, wham, and you fall down. You're fucking, people think you got shot. You're, fucking you're just stopping, like, no, just, you're, you're fucking up your heart doing that shooting 15 everything, of them. Man, it knocks you out. You shoot, I would also like assume, bad. I mean, that probably contributed to like TBI for you, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Well, yeah. I, I do want to make sure. It's like the Carl out- Gustav. You know, recoil yeah. this weapon. Yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah, you're supposed to like shoot. You're not I think allowed to shoot were, it a bunch of times. Was it? But if you're we, in a in a firefight, what are you gonna do? Hey, hold on, time hold out. On, hold on, I gotta take thirty Wait, minutes off. I, I only shot, shot four. I, shot, I, I, know, I shot four. I gotta take thirty minutes off. I can't shoot anymore. We and did, then the we, our Gustav freaking gunners, VA. Oh, dude, the Gustav gunners. We had tremendous. I, that's one thing I do admire about Rangers. That we had the fucking some of the best Gustav gunners in the in the world. Wait, that was the, that was the, that was their fucking joke. It was like because we could only yeah. go to the range to shoot four. And then you couldn't shoot more. But that was the joke. It's like, yeah, right. we're going to have to take 30 minutes That's off nuts. in a firefight. We're gonna have to shoot. Okay. I was going to show you this right here. Check this out. Yeah, sorry, Ian. I, Ian, I know. I no, it's cool. Off, yeah. And sorry for the people that. on on a listening, go to our YouTube because Kristen has something Ooh. here. Always that motorcycle. That looks like fucking Batman's motorcycle. I want to back it. I have a motorcycle. 
Whoa. That Holy shit. That's I'm like, you put RPG. Is that a seven tube you put on the, the back? <laughs> I figured, I figured, you know, they didn't need it anymore. So I brought it home. That's and, um, awesome. So Dude, I got my 1966 epic. Harley. And it's demilled. The whole front end is cut off the RPG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's so it's just a it's a tube, steel tube. Yeah, it's, it's useless. You got, you got that fucking seven so, tube. That's so I, I took my bike apart and I, I built the whole bike, but I welded an RPG seven for the back muffler of my. Chief, of my that, that's fucking sweet. We gotta yeah. send us a picture. That's what we gotta use. <laughs> I, you gotta send us a picture of that. That's fucking. And uh, awesome. in 2010, they put me in um, Easy Rider magazine with that motorcycle. No that's shit. Awesome. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, yeah, I built the whole thing. Won a bunch of trophies. It was. Can, like, can, uh, can I? Can I loop? Can I Google that on my phone? Can I Google that and find find the picture? The easier. Probably. I mean, it's inside the cover somewhere for. I'll, I'll find. I'll a bunch find of trophies. I got like all the trophies over there. Motorcycle trophies all over there. Dude, that's the shit for, for the bikes I build. That's awesome. awesome. And, and, well, I, and I and I dig your plank, dude. That's that's all. I, that, I that's cool. You're 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 fucking rock star, man. It's awesome. And I'm digging that plank up there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that, well, is that for? Is that wait? Is that from one? Is that from team one? Is that are you plank owner from one? Is that where that's from? Oh no, no, that's why I was trying to remember, look at the the plank up on top of the wall. Oh, the the paddle. Yeah, way up there. Yeah. Oh, that's What's like that an from? old buds paddle washed up on shore. Okay. I used oh, to, I lived in Imperial oh. Beach, and oh, so gotcha. you'd have stuff washed up on shore once. That was just one that washed up on shore. Ah, cool. Well, that's still I cool. Got, I got a picture from the palace though. Right oh there. shit! Yeah. And when the V and the VVIP we talked about a little bit too. I know we we probably passed each other a few times there. Oh, <laughs> that where did the hell did you get that Saddam picture from? Did you get from the palace? We were you like could, the first ones in there. You, you Wait, hold it up again, Kristen, because it, it's going to pan to you when you talk. I just said Kristen, but Chris, I I, will, I don't care, man. Kristen, I never honestly. cared about that crap even yeah, ten yeah. years ago. It's it's how I know you though. But talk, wait, talk so that it'll pan to you. Oh. Hey, here's a picture. <laughs> I don't know what to say. No, here's that's it. That's it. Just so picture. that it, just so that it pants you. That's pretty cool. But a um, stupid that... picture. And I just I put it in this frame so it looked a little nicer. Dude, that looks it was cool, just a right? dumb picture. It was on the ground in a palace. It was just but that's it. Ep that's epic. That's something yeah. that will be with you forever, man. Yeah. That's fucking epic. I still got old fucking Iraqi uh uh tea jars. I just found it. Um it was one of the tomb of the unknown. It was a, a, a hidden room down there yeah. in that tomb of the unknown. And, I mean, they weren't worth it, but they were cool. I still got them. Yeah, I, yeah. Just, they're, they're, just something that's something a little picture this big that looks really cool because it's in the nice frame. That's so awesome, <laughs> uh, well, uh, Chief. Thanks for coming. Yeah, on. I, really and I, I was just gonna say if if you guys don't allow me to wrap up, I've no, go ahead, gonna go, go another two hours here. <laughs> so I, 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 I am gonna go wrap ahead. things up. And it's uh, at Valor, the number four US on Instagram, at Valor four US on uh, Twitter, on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, I feel like you're grabbing something else. What else are you showing us? Holy oh, yeah, you yeah, showed the last time. Yes, it's it's for a museum. It belongs to a museum that I gave it to because it's you can't have these. But the, I got it right now, and then I'm giving it back to the museum because it was for a demonstration. That is sweet. I, and then the museum plain. gets it now, just for like because these are all over the place in military that normal people can't see this stuff. You know, it's in like I I know ones at Crane, Indiana one of the ones that we had there's ones at socom or at jsoc they yeah. have all the guns and all the stuff so this is at just a regular museum where, where real you, people can see it where did you get that one that gold plated ak where'd you get it did, was that yours or did the museum give it to you or did you no find no it, it was it was one that i i got you got and then i had the gun and then the jag took the gun and did the full check-in and then it disappeared shocker you know? It's in some jag fucking lawyers or some politician's Probably. office. You know, it's but in the some thing politics. is what I knew. I says, well, I registered this golden gun with the military. The magazine would have disappeared. Yeah. And so I just I stuck that in was my baggage and all my other magazines and, and ammo stuff. And when I got back, I gave it to the museum because the gun disappeared. So I was like, well, I, it was supposed to go to a museum. That's the purpose of it. Or give it to somebody. To, I don't know. But it's not it's supposed just, to be like in personal possession. And I think that's what happens with a lot of stuff. It's like, this is museum stuff. Yeah. It's not mine. Like, well, this that is dumb a good, picture. This the is picture a, will be in a museum someday. You know, yeah. it's still on a wall just for a podcast. But in like a year or whatever, I'll be like, hey, I don't, I don't need this crap. I don't want it here museum. 
Yeah. Cool. Well, as, as I'm trying to say, this is a good promotion for the YouTube because most of the audience does listen. So if you're just listening and you want to see everything we're describing, go to youtube.com slash battle line podcast. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, subscribe uh, on YouTube, leave comments. And, and we're still doing that ongoing contest that Jeremy Mitchell is running for subscribers. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button. You're entered. We have great prizes from our sponsors. We've done um beard vet coffee and a lot of other cool uh stuff in there so yeah hit subscribe uh any of that helps us with the algorithm and all that and uh as always it's great having you on i always know the show is going to go all over the place when i have you on and we appreciate it yeah chief awesome thank you hey and you yeah you keep doing what you're doing okay you're, you're doing great things you too chief. you guys are yeah. doing great chris yeah, man. huge respect man no. rangers lead the way uh, no, like, dude, I still dude, got my all, Ranger handbook and all the way. Tell oh, you what, oh that, that reminds me, you do have an older Ranger for everybody out there. Last thing, Chiefs Ranger handbook is older than mine. That motherfucker. <laughs> all right, all right, but but it's still those old, Sorry. Those old Ranger. <laughs> that, you know, and that was the cool. Those are Ranger handbooks. The misspellings. Those were the best yeah. Ranger handbooks. The words were all misspelled oh. and fucking terrible grammar. But you know, you're fucking old OG. And you sneak them up Ranger. real close and get them with your hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, that shit could still work you never know yeah. it does but, but yeah but but be safe all right you keep doing what Thank you're you. doing and it, i know you may not never want to go up but you always have an open invitation you just you just let us know okay Whatever appreciate you it all thanks right. guys that's all for this episode of the battle line podcast but we'll be back on monday with more american straight talk until then be sure to follow us on instagram at battle line podcast and on Twitter at Battleline Pod. To sign up for future Battleline tactical courses, go to www.christantoparanto.net. Believe in yourself, face all challenges head on, and as always, never, never quit. quit.